Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Super Saturday Morning, your source of vintage cartoons, commercials, and anime with a brand new broadcast premiering live every Saturday morning at 7.45 a.m. Eastern right here on YouTube. Yes, the thumbnail is correct. We are already at 25 broadcasts. That means that there have been 23 straight weeks of Super Saturday Morning since two of the broadcasts we're bonuses. Uh, let's keep it going. Another 25 broadcasts and beyond. Last week's broadcast was a pain in the ass to upload. Now, keep in mind that I work Monday to Friday, 830 to 5 p.m. When I get home, I usually have a bunch of stuff to do. Errands to run, people to see, dinner to cook, clothes to clean, groceries to buy, blah, blah, blah. If I'm lucky, I'm able to sit down at my computer around 8 to 9 p.m. that evening and start working on Super Saturday morning. Sometimes I don't get that time at all during the evening and I have to just shoot for the next day. Now, editing the video takes a little bit of time, but it's not the most time-consuming aspect of this whole process. The most time-wasting part of this process comes after I finish editing the video, actually. So when I complete the video, I have to render the video file and then export it to my PC, which takes hours and hours. And if the exportation process gets screwed up, I have to figure out what went wrong and restart the whole process of rendering and exporting the video again and wait more hours. If everything goes well, I can then move on to the last stage, which is uploading the video onto YouTube, which also takes hours, by the way. If I'm lucky, the uploading process will go well, and YouTube will only block the video in a few countries where they don't watch my content anyways. If I'm unlucky, and I was last week, then YouTube will block my video because they found something the creator of the video does not want us to see. Sometimes YouTube will be able to edit out that content on its own, but since my videos are so long nowadays, it cannot do that, which means I need to go back to the editing software, remove whatever YouTube is blocking, render and export the video yet again, taking hours for that whole process to complete again, hope that the video exported without any issues, and then try uploading it onto YouTube again. I completed episode 24 early last week. You know, I did all the editing, got all the videos and everything together. It was beautiful. I put it in a beautiful package. And um, I started the um, render and exportation process Monday night. I was thinking I was getting ahead of my work and finishing it early. I was wrong. I leave my PC on overnight so that the video can export. And so Tuesday evening comes and I upload the video onto YouTube. I leave my PC on overnight Tuesday, come back Wednesday evening and see that my video is blocked by YouTube because of Magic Knight Ray Earth. It got blocked by the channel that uploaded it onto YouTube. So it is there if you want to check it out. Take a look. I think that's dumb because if you own the rights to Magic Knight Ray Earth, then why not upload a high quality version of it instead? If you own it, you know, don't you want to show it to its full potential? Maybe you can argue that you want people to maybe buy it or pay for the streaming service, but then why even bother showing it on YouTube? But I digress. So I quickly go to my editing software, remove Magic Knight Ray Earth and then begin the whole render and export process overnight again. So I wake up early Thursday morning to start the upload process onto YouTube this time. I'm thinking, all right, great. This will be uploaded. It'll be done. No problem. I get home Thursday evening only to see that my video was blocked by YouTube again. Because of a quick 30-second Devilman Crybaby commercial. That's not the 90s Devilman uh, anime commercial that you saw in there. But for a new one that is currently on Netflix. And if you have Netflix and you haven't seen Devilman Crybaby, I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, there was a song on that ad that got blocked by YouTube. 
I was more angry about this one than Magic Knight Ray Earth because it's a commercial, first of all. Don't you want people to see the advertisement for your show? So why couldn't I just show it? And the other thing is, how come the first time I uploaded it, the video, you didn't catch it the second time? Why wasn't it blocked from the first video? You could have told me the first time when I tried to upload the whole video that that was going to be copyright blocked too. So I had to find out after uploading it a second time. So now I go to the editing software once again, remove the ad, put a new ad in, start the whole render and export process once again. Wake up early on Friday morning and upload the video again. And if you've been keeping track, yes, my PC was running all week long trying to get this video uploaded and exported or exported and uploaded. Now, thankfully, that was the end of it. But sometimes I have a lot of difficulty with these uploads, partly because of issues with my current PC partly because of YouTube being a pain in the ass and blocking the content I am trying to show you guys, and partly because I have a frustratingly small amount of time to work on these videos. Now, shout out to Johnny Wing Charms. He actually commented on one of the uploads that I was trying to put through saying, hey, I feel like I've already clicked the thumbs up button for this video and I'm doing it a second time. Is this a new video? And the answer was yes. Yes, it was. That was the second video, and he I assume that he left that comment right be, sometime right before that one got blocked. But yeah, I'm sorry for all the trouble, but I just want you to know um, why situations like last week happen. Um, you could see I was having a lot of difficulty getting it uploaded, and that is why. It's very frustrating. It's very time-consuming. Sometimes the editing process goes without a hitch and everything goes fine and I can quickly edit everything. The exportation goes off without a hitch. The upload goes through easily and there's no worries, but I do have trouble sometimes. Uh, that being said, today's broadcast consists of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, Ulysses 31, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Dungeons and Dragons, Pee-wee's Playhouse, Hey Vern, It's Ernest, that's a premiere, The Tick, Battletech, another premiere, Bump in the Night, WMAC Masters, Panzer World Galleon, Rama One Half, Berserk, and we're going to finish it off with an anime movie, Battle Royal High School. This is a good one, it's a weird one, it's gory, um, but it's got a lot of action, a lot of cool stuff. Um, it is weird. It is unusual, but Hey, that's anime, right? All right. All that being said, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, we are at 59 subs. And if we get to 100 subs, I will work on a third bonus episode for all of you to enjoy one Saturday afternoon in order to attract more subscribers. We must get good with the YouTube algorithm. The way we do this is by clicking the thumbs up icon, commenting on the video, sharing the video and channel on your social media um, to someone who you think might get uh, some value in this and just um, overall interacting with it. I work hard trying to make sure these uploads are ready to premiere for you every Saturday morning. And this channel is not monetized, so I make absolutely no money off of this. The best way to show me your thanks, if you're thankful, is to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment on the video saying good things, and sharing the videos and the channel. All right, guys, it's time to start the show. Thank you for 25 broadcasts. Grab something hot to eat. Grab something cool to drink. Subscribe, like, comment, and share, and enjoy the 25th broadcast of Super Saturday Morning. Hey, 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 it's Bud Albert, and I'm going to sing a song for you. Bye. 
Cosby coming at you with music and fun, and if you're not careful, you may learn something before it's done. So let's get ready, okay? Hey, hey, hey! Tell me your name. Won't talk, huh? Well, how'd you like a knuckle sandwich? What's that? You hear your mother calling you. Come on, put up your dukes. Put them up. Start talking. I'll rip your head off. Does that remind you of anybody? I think we all recognize a bully. Pretty tough when he thinks he's got the upper hand. Gang's been getting a hard time from a dude like this named Slappy. Whip that old softball right in here, Harold. You watch Bill put it out of the park. Hit it this way. Yeah, come on, come on, Bill. Yeah, yeah knock it go right, right man. man. Stick it over here, Bill. Let's yeah. go, baby. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, swing, 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 swing better. Swing. <laughs> hey, look at those clowns, Fungo. <laughs> yeah, Slappy. <laughs> look at them. Look at them. <laughs> I feel like some laughs. What do you say we pull the old grapefruit trick on him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the old grapefruit trick. <laughs> What's the old grapefruit trick, Slappy? Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> Just screw one right in here. I'm gonna give you a little softball pitching lesson. Yeah, pitching lesson. <laughs> oh, yeah? It's okay, Al. Ain't a pitch alive can get one past old fence busting Cosby. Wait. <laughs> Sorry about that, fence buster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Beanball, put one over the plate. I knocked the cover off it. Stick it over here. Hey, man, that wasn't too cool. Not cool, huh? Well, how'd you like me to put you in us, String Bean? Yeah, String Bean. You keep out of this, you little stooge. Who are you calling a stooge? You take that back. Well, okay this time. Boy, lucky that Slappy ain't dealing with me. I wouldn't back down like that. Me be neither, man be. Yeah, you said it. Hey, hey, hey. When do we play? <laughs> we can play as soon as that bad dude Slappy gets off the field. Hey, Bill, what's all that tutti fruity stuff on you? I tell you what it is. That Slappy. <laughs> hey, Fat Albert, how you doing, man? Give me a five. Hey, 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 Slappy. How's the world treating you? Not very often. <laughs> Not very often. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> well, I got to split now. Me and Fungo got to go down to the bakery and uh, feel some coffee cakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> coffee cakes, yeah. <laughs> Hey, 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 that Slappy's okay. He ain't okay, that Slappy's a bad cat. Huh? Why are you bad mouth from Slappy? I'll tell you why, because he pushes smaller dudes around. And he does mean things. Mean things like what? Like pitching grapefruit softballs. Yeah, like taking the ball from Weird Harold. Yeah, be, and be throwing be ferocious be looks at us, but. <laughs> oh, come on now, man. None of this sounds so mean to me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You weren't there. Neither were you. Yeah. Come he don't on. mess with you. Yeah, man. He don't, he don't mess even with mess with me with you. Either. You won't never be here. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, let's play. 
<laughs> yeah, free coffee cakes. <laughs> you know, sure funny, Slappy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Come on, Harold. Move it. Hey, Slappy, throw the ball back. Ball? What ball? Do you see a ball, Fungo? Yeah, right there. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I don't see no ball. Come on, you big creep. Give me that ball. Sure, sure, kid. I'll give it to you. Here. <laughs> Here's your ball, kid. <laughs> Hey, get off of me. Let me alone. Hey, Slappy, help. I'll fix you. Come on, let me have it. You dirty ball stealer. Hey, hey, hey. Russell, what you doing? These two creeps got a ball and won't give it back. Oh, this must be your ball over here. Here you go, Albert. Better keep an eye on the kid. He's a mean dude. Russell. Get off that cat. But, Albert... You better shape up, or he ain't gonna play with us no more. Yeah, play no more. Okay, Russell, get up and tell him you're sorry. Fat Albert, they had to call you Broken Clock. Broken Clock? Why? Because you don't know what time it is. <laughs> I'd say so far that Fat Albert's the only one who hasn't seen Slappy for what he is. Now, the only question now is how long can Slappy keep conning his one and only fan? Hey, Slappy, what are those dudes doing now? Asking for stitches. That's what they're doing. Hey, dudes, dig me. The world champion of the junkyard Olympic roller ski jump. Well, Bill, off the record, Bill. How do you think this year's event shaping up? Well, Buck, this is a hard one to call. It's up for grabs this year with your new season veterans up against the host of promising youngsters. Wonderful, Bill. Now up to the ramp, where Rudy's ready to roll. Take it away. Well, Bill, how would you rate that one? Great form on your takeoff. I have to give Rudy pretty high marks on that one, Buck. Are you ready for this? Sure, this is great. Like I said, this is crummy. Well, Bill, how would you call this one? With that broom and mop, it ought to be a clean sweep. This party's pooping out. Let's see if we can liven it up. Yeah. Liven it up. Hey, you dudes, you got some kind of deal going on here? Oh, no. Not again. Say, Bill, how about showing me and my pal the ropes? Yeah, the ropes. Okay, Slabby. What you got up your sleeve? What? Up my sleeve? I'm clean. We just want to get a close-up look-see at a real pro in action. Let me go. I got to make my jump. You are about to witness the meaning of the word jerk. <laughs> oh, oh, stop. Oh, oh. <laughs> Baby, what would happen, but maybe? I don't know. But as long as it happened to Slappy Man, it's funny. <laughs> uh, you? Huh? I'm gonna tie your neck in a pretzel knot. Hey, hey, hey. What's the hassle all about? Really, Bill? Like I was saying, that wasn't too cool, tying that rope around my arm and dragging me down the hill like that. <laughs> me? Tie you? Hey, hey, hey. That ain't no way. Bill, you shouldn't mess around like that. You okay, Slappy? Oh, yeah, I'm coming out of it. What? Wait a minute, you got it backwards. 
Lucky for you, Slappy's easy going, man. Yeah, easy going. Don't ever do anything mean like that again, Bill. But, Albert. Sorry about that, Slappy. I don't carry no grudge. Well, I'll get you, punk. What kind of spy game you playing? Shh. He appears. Who? Slampy, that's who. He's out to get me. Oh, come on, man. Slappy wouldn't hurt a fly. Says you. That Slappy is bad news. Well, you wouldn't have nothing to worry about if you hadn't pulled that trick on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't pull no trick on. Slappy pulled the trick. Huh. Don't give me that. You the one that's mean. Fat Albert, you're all wet. Like I said, Bill, you're mean. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, guess who? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, hi, hi, Slappy. <laughs> Any canaries in your family? Huh? Canaries? I heard you singing to Fat Albert. You told him I dropped that bag of water on him. Oh, uh, um, uh, I, see, uh, um... Now you're really gonna get it. Yeah, get it. <laughs> oh, hi, Fat Albert. Huh? Where? Where's Fat Albert? Hey, come back here! Yeah, come back here! Speak! Come on and speak! Ribbit! Okay, one more time! Ribbit! You see any signs of him, Russell? Oh, relax. I'll protect you. Hey, kid! All right, where's the no-good brother of yours? Good thing he can't hear you. He told me when he was catching up with you, he's gonna turn you inside out. Oh, yeah? Ribbit. Hey, Russell, I don't know you had a little brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no class. <laughs> give me back my frog. Come on, Slappy, give me. <laughs> Them anymore. Yeah, I, uh, uh, hassle him. No, no more. Louder. Louder! Yeah, louder! 
I ain't gonna hassle you no more. Come on, Albert. Let him have it. Bopper, him be omba the beezer booby. Yeah, Albert screaming. No, no, please, Albert, don't hurt me, please. Try to understand, I'm the youngest of 15 kids. Ever since I was a little baby, everybody picked on me. I couldn't help myself. But from now on, it's all gonna be different. I promise. Well, okay, but you hassle the kids once more. No, no, I promise. Word of honor. Come on, Slappy. Come on, Slappy. Give, give us give our ball. Yeah, man, we want to play. Yeah, I want to play, on. too. Come on. <laughs> you promise not to hassle us anymore. I didn't promise you. I promised Fat Albert, and he ain't here. Yeah, but I'm here. Give me the ball back, Slappy, or else. <laughs> or else what? Or else this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, great, man. How did you that do was really together, man. Yeah, that was yeah, bad. That was bad. Wow. How'd you do that, Russell? What's your secret? When it comes to having these bullies, you just got to have the right touch. How about that? Trust little old Russell to find Slappy's Achilles heel. If you don't know what that means, ask your folks. <laughs> anyway, this has all gotten Slappy to take a good look at himself. He'll think a long time before he starts pushing someone else around. Fat Albert and the gang have learned something from all this, too. And they'll tell you about it in this song. Attention! Attention! <laughs> I just want a little attention. You know it's funny what some people will do for a little attention. They'll roller skate backwards. Hang upside down, fall on their head. Yeah. But some people get attention by being mean, and that's a bully. But you know, once you understand what his problem is, you can help him. Because what he really needs is a friend. Just ask him. Are you a bully? Casey's Home Stories, you 
Cyclops when he rescued the children and his son Telemachus. But the ancient gods of Olympus are angry and threaten a terrible revenge. Mortals, you defy the gods? I sentence you to travel among unknown stars. Until you find the kingdom of Hades, your bodies will stay as lifeless as stone. Ulysses, the way back to Earth has been wiped from my memory. Father! Oh, Father! You are alive. Same consistency as Earth, nearing end of Ice Age. No, it's not a robot. It's a fossil. And that one down there? A dinosaur. An animal that lived on Earth millions of years ago. Father, Shurka reports an Earth-like planet the way it was 200 million years ago. Yes, with a small difference, Telemachus. What difference is that, Ulysses? Shurka put up a visual display of comparative data. On screen. Now, look carefully. Here's the Earth as it was 200 million years ago. In the past, the Earth had only one massive continent. And only one ocean, do you see? But I don't understand the difference. Just a minute, Yumi. Put up a visual comparison of the Earth as it is today. Oh. Now, Shurka, draw a line that passes through both poles. As you requested. Oh! It doesn't slide in the same direction. The Earth's axis is different. Correct. There's a different polar axis. Perhaps it's a sister planet of the Earth. Or maybe it's the Earth of 200 million years ago. The only way to answer all the questions is to go and see. Hooray! We're going to go back in time! Uh, go back? Why? One millennium is like another, isn't it? 
It looks like the outline of the Andes Mountains. Precisely, the identical contours. Look, it's in the shape of a bird. It could be a landing site, Father. Let's get closer. Telemachus, do you remember that legend I once told you about the Inca people? Who are the Incas? The Incas claimed that mysterious beings inhabited the Earth before the appearance of man. They left the planet by airships just before the Great Flood and fled to the far side of the sky. According to the legend, they used these strange places as landing sites. Now we're going to land here. But those beings, where are they now? Maybe they're still there. Who can tell? We'll go down and see if there's any trace of them. Burn! We must have startled them. Brace yourselves, everyone. It looks like they're coming back. Oh. Galaxies, they're attacking us. It's as if they want to prevent us from landing. Oh, oh I don't want to see this. Just watch! No, stop! Stop, Telemachus! Oh. You mean stay close to me, all of you. Telemachus, Yumi, quickly, into the cave! It's like the control room of a spaceship! Get back! Oh, I'll just press this button. And now this one. Whoops, going down. What's happening? Nono must have set off some kind of security system. We're saved. Great, Nono. still do. Oh, I could do with the swig of antifreeze. Well, children, I'm afraid we're prisoners. Ulysses, Telemachus, there is an onboard alert. What is it, Shirka? Come in, Shirka. We're not receiving you anymore. Circuits have broken down. Shirka, can you hear me? Try to reestablish contact. Full alert. Strong atmospheric disturbance. Have lost contact with you. Seismic tremors, force five on the Richter scale and rising. There's an alert. Shirka, come in. Shirka! We've lost all sound. Something terrible is about to happen on this planet, and I have no idea what it is. What are we going to do? We'll have a nail or two, and the answer will come to you. What if I try to use telepathy to contact Shirka? Try, Yumi. Go ahead. If you can do it, we might be saved. Alert, force on Richter scale seven, eight, nine. Shirka warns us of a tidal wave, followed, followed by an earthquake, a strong one. I've lost contact. We will all be drowned. Quick, we have got to find a way out of here. Ah. One, two, three. You can count them all you like, but they'll always be nine. That's just it. That's what I find fascinating. There are nine. Isn't that the number of planets in the Earth's solar system? Yes, so what? What are you getting at? If these nine objects represent the nine planets of the solar system, the third one must represent the Earth, the third planet. Maybe, but it's not going to get us out of here, is it? I'm not so sure that it won't. Good, Yumi, you figured it out. This must be a temple to the sun. Look at the sphere drawn on the door. It's identical to the one in front of I you. I still don't get it. Somebody 
there's something is inside there. <gasps> but who? I'm sure of it. Listen. It's going boom, tuck, boom, tuck. A heartbeat, a hibernation chamber. For what? We have to know. Let's try to open it. melted yet? The ice? Yes. Then our hibernation period is over. Have the Kikinopters left as well? Kikinopters? What's that? You don't know? Then it means that they have. I am Soria. Who are you? I am Ulysses. This is Yumi from the planet Zotra, my son Telemachus and Nona. Uh oh We happen to be here because we are looking for the route back to the Earth. But you are on the Earth, for goodness sake. Your Earth and ours are not the same, it would seem. Ours is the Earth of the 31st century. You understand? What? Another Earth? How confusing. But why were you hibernating, Soria? Waiting until the flood was over. The flood? What do you mean? Which flood are you talking about? I'm speaking of the terrible flood that covered our Earth just before we went to sleep. The gods lived here then, and we were their slaves. A great flood was predicted, and the gods decided to leave without us. The Kikinopters were put on guard to keep us away from the spaceships of the gods. So, in secret, we built ourselves an ark. We took a pair of every species of animal on board. And the flood came. But since the gods left, we've lived in fear of the Kikinopters. No sooner had the flood ended when ice formed over everything, and then the black firebirds started attacking us. Every time we tried to go out, they were there. So we took refuge deep inside the earth. Then our supplies ran out. All we could do was go into hibernation and wait for the ice to melt. There were still some Kikinopters, but we didn't know how many. There could have been thousands. The only way to defeat them is through water. That is why we decided to wait for the second flood, and now that it is over... No, Saria, I'm afraid that the second flood is only just beginning. Oh! Children, follow me. This is the heart of our city. Up there in the dome is where the other Saurians still sleep. Quickly, we must go and wake them. Impossible. To do that, we must get to the Ark. Where is your Ark? Up there, directly above the city. Ah, then we came in through the Ark. That's how the Kikinopters were able to get in here. Soria, I think that there is just enough time to save all of you. Go up to the Ark and order the Saurians to wake up. Meanwhile, I have an idea. I think I have a way of getting rid of the Kikinopters. Go on, quickly. Sorry, I'll go with you. And shall I go with you, Father? No, no, no. You'll be more useful in the Ark. 
Emergency alert. Tidal wave imminent. Immense flood about to begin. Ulysses, can you hear me? Shirka, at last. Shirka, keep the Odyssey in geostationary orbit. Maintain contact. Affirmative, Ulysses. There they are! Soria, is there any water in your city? Yes. We have reservoirs. I believe they still have water in them. Good. Then we have a chance. This way. What have I, a robot or a fire engine? Hello? Everything all right? Yes, Telemachus. I'll take care of the firebirds. You manage all the rest. Oh, he slips my tongues. There they are. To the ark and fast. Sure, but they'll follow us. We're sitting ducks. Now, children. Why are you taking all these precautions? No one must be left behind. Everyone must go to the ark. Every child, every man, woman, everyone. Everything is ready. Now, let's wake them up. Wake, wake up, my up, friends. friends. The great, great flood is not over yet, yet, but, but still but you must wake up. up. <gasps> Look! Father, can you hear me? What is it, Telemachus? Everything's fine here. The Saurians are waking up. Friends, follow me to the Ark. The Firebirds are in the city. Careful, Yumi. Stand just there, and as soon as we're inside, you press that. I understand. We'll see which is the stronger, fire or water. Keep them back from the ark. Firebirds, you burning vultures, get away! Telemachus, Telemachus, can you hear me? Are the Saurians ready? Yes, it's almost finished. The ark is ready to leave. No, no, let's go in different directions. Distract the Kikinopters and then join me in the control cockpit. Who, oh, me? Extreme caution. Planetary axis about to reverse polarization. Caution. Everyone at duty stations. Uh, I can't shake them out. Come on, a little more. Help! I'm melting! I'm melting! Quickly! To the ark! Attention, the planet's axis is changing now. It's a disaster! Let's hope that the ark holds together! And Father isn't here yet! The tidal wave. Father, at last! 
fast. Are you hurt? No, I'm all right. But where's Nono? Isn't he here? We thought that you two were together. No, no. Have you seen Nono? No, no. No, no. no, no. Ulysses, you're safe. Yes, but we can't find Nono. Poor Nono, carried away in the flood or captured by the kickers. Oh, no, not my Nono. Well, we cannot wait. We must float the ark or we run the risk of being crushed by the tidal wave. I know, Saria, you're right. We can't wait. Shirka, can you hear me? Yes, Ulysses, I hear you. Transmit a visual of the planet on the screens in the Ark. Very well. How is the reception? Not very good. The picture is too small. Zoom in a bit, Shirka. Yes, Ulysses. Time curve of the Earth, its past, present, and future. We're coming on board, Shirka. Send us a shuttle right away. As instructed. All of you, listen. What is it? I heard a strange sound coming from the elevator to the pressurized airlock. The Kikanopters, they've returned. I'll go and see. Telemachus, be careful. Oh. No, no. Oh, well, I'm smashed, dented, short-circuited, and all the count of those hot-tempered, feathered friends. <laughs> <laughs> We will never forget what Earth people of the 31st century did for Earth people of the past. Do you really think that they were the Earth people of millions of years ago? We didn't imagine that, Flood. It wasn't a dream or mirage. Who can tell? The continents seem identical to the ones on our Earth. This world seems to be an exact copy of ours, but was it our Earth or another planet? One thing is certain. We did meet Saria. Now she and her people are safe to go into their own future.
Blaster, Skeletor, Fisto, Roboto, and He-Man figures each sold separately. Roboto, attack! Your Dragon Blaster can't stop the most powerful robot in the universe. Oh, yeah! Freeze, Roboto! I said freeze! Dragon Blaster, Skeletor, new from the Masters of the Universe collection. Other action figures each sold separately from Mattel. Is Snake Mountain ready to take on He-Man? Anytime! Snake Mountain, Battle Armor, He-Man, and Skeletor each sold separately. You put the mountain together. Batteries not included. Is your serpent ready to strike? Yes! Come, He-Man. Come to Snake Mountain. It's you, day. Snake Mountain with Echo Microphone from the Masters of the Universe collection. Action figures each sold separately from Mattel. thereby completing the Pyramid of Darkness, beneath which no source of electrical energy can function. Zaymot frees his brother Tomax, and the Crimson Twins overthrow the Cobra Commander, ordering the Dreadnoughts to wrest control of the space shuttle from Zartan. Meanwhile, Snake Eyes and Shipwreck race back to Joe headquarters with the secret of the control cubes, and Quick Kick, Alpine, and Bazooka plummet to their deaths as we begin the next exciting episode of G.I. Joe, the Pyramid of Darkness. G-forces! Too hard to move! Bazooka! Great stunt work, stuntman! Any ideas? As a matter of fact, did you notice what the cargo on this crate is? Trouble bubbles! Let's move it. Nuts! You can't run a 20th century HQ on 1st century technology. This is hopeless. Without the juice, it's no use. Oh. Citizens of Earth, we have diminished the pyramid's power enough to address you now. Ah, uh, stick your head in a bucket and rust your face off! And here to present our ultimatum, your new supreme leaders, the Crimson Twins! All governments must surrender to us... ...and Cobra by the end of the day. Or we shall intensify the strength... ...of the Pyramid of Darkness. Looks like Cobra Commander's having a little power failure of his own. Got less than seven hours. What's that noise? Sounds like my peppy's ranch at feeding time. Open the door and give our visitors the famous Joe welcome. We're saved, guys. It's the Cow Cavalry. <laughs> we thought you were done for. If you had to play cowboys and cobras, couldn't you have done it on horses? 
very hilarious. But when we hit the pyramid of darkness, we had to improvise. Do us a favor, Wild Bill. Milk our ponies and bring us a glass. Huh? I'll get you both a drink if you got something for us. We got a laser disc from a Cobra factory. Eh, how do you play a laser disc with candle power? All life forms will perish. You have only until the end of this day to respond. Yeah! Bravo! Bravo! It's even better in rerun! Wanna see it again? Under, Under no, no circumstances. circumstances. You don't seem so confident without your precious whistle. Take him away! Dusty, we've got to get control of these fatal fluffies. No talking! Well, well. Lying down on the job again, are you? Get back in line! The whistle that controls the fatal fluffies. Torchy has it around his neck. <laughs> See that whistle junkyard? Go fetch it! Whoa, no! <laughs> Good boy, Junk. Get that whistle! Prisoners to the area! Step aside. Move, move, or be punished. The fatal fluffies are going crazy. We must also take precautions to guard Cobra Temple from, from a sneak attack. Boulder Dash! This temple is in no danger because nobody knows where it is. Now get out of my sight! We've got to treat this as a temporary victory only, unless you guys at headquarters have something to make it a little more permanent. This laser disc Snake Eyes and I borrowed from Cobra has info on the control cubes. Now that we've got power, I can spin this platter. Let's hope it's a hit. I'll patch the computer's image directly to you, Flint. Plans and structural elevations of robotic self-defense mechanisms. Details of longitudinal alignment systems. Skip past the general diagrams. What we need to know is whether those cubes are vulnerable. You got it, lady. Sectional reinforcement. Arm gusset weld. Transpose grid circuitry. Self-destruct relay transmitter. Self-destruct mechanism. Self-destruct mechanism. Bingo! It's in Cobra Temple. Now all we gotta do is fire that house of serpents before it's too late. Admiral Ledger, Cobra's rebuilt the Pyramid of Darkness. 
<laughs> this low altitude pyramid of darkness will give us the time we need to destroy G.I. Joe. <laughs> Excellent, Destro. <laughs> then we shall win after all. The world will be ours. <laughs> Here we go again. Headquarters, bail out! Too late! E.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Sorry to drop in and announce, but we just happened to fall by the neighborhood. Well, don't keep us in suspense, Alpine. Why'd you treat us to this open house, and who's the barefoot stranger? Introducing star of stage, screen, and a regular on the gong show. <laughs> quick kick, stunt man extraordinaire. Let me give him a quick update. I met these two guys on the Mountain of Glass. They were in real hot water out there in the cold, but I shoot away some leopard seals, and we hitched a ride with Major Blood to Cobra Temple under a falls, but we... Hold it, hold it. Uh, rewind that part about the Cobra Temple. I said Major Blood gave us a ride to Cobra Temple, but we... You know where Cobra Temple is? Sure, doesn't everybody? This is the info we've been waiting for. The darkness isn't holding. Then get on the horn and see if you can contact Flint. There's a crack in the Cobra Curtain, and we're going through. Let's move out! Yo, Joe! Let's go! Stabilize the pyramid! What's taking you so long, Destro? This flickering is intolerable! G.I. Joe must be denied access to energy until we can launch our attack! Come on! We got just enough power! Keep moving! Cobra soldiers, forward to victory! Cobra! Oh, oh, impossible! We'll be out of this darkness in a flash! Then, hammer through that temple and put those cubes out of action! Yo! Joe! G.I. Joe? But how? Take defensive positions and fight the enemy to oblivion! Unleash the Cobra Dragon and terminate the Joes! No strength! Got to fight! Fight! Got to... Uh. <laughs> We've won! 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 <laughs> Wait until the Cobra Dragon is finished with them! Then clean up the mess! I'll be inside writing my victory speech! <laughs> Any suggestions? Yodel, you gotta be kidding! Wait, I got an idea! Now, Yodel! This is ridiculous! Come on, let's try it! Yodel. Why 
am I always the last one to know? We've got to find the self-destruct mechanism for those cubes. But where is it? Polly Pooh! Polly, your allowance just went up ten crackers a week. Something is happening. Brilliant deduction, Baroness. Don't become hostile with me. We have a relationship. Silence, woman. I'm losing pyramid control. Ah! It's self-destructing! Sensors indicate G.I. Joe is pursuing us. But that's impossible. Absolutely impossible. Well, somebody forgot to tell them! Ready on flight deck? No, Joe! We must get to the Enterprise Towers. Yes, hurry! <laughs> Looks like Cobra's hunting for a nest, Lady J. Let's make sure they don't get too comfortable. I'm right behind you. Yo, Joe! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Retreat. We shall soon activate a weapon which will destroy our enemies completely. <laughs> <laughs> weapon? Enterprise Towers! They're transforming it into a gantry and battle rocket. If that ship ever gets up, no force on Earth will be able to handle it. We've got to keep it from reaching space. <laughs> Brilliant! Huge rocket is invincible. The last lap shall indeed be best. <laughs> Set. Need a lift? Station Delta, do you see Battlebird preparing for liftoff? We see it, and we don't like it. Duke and the rest of the guys are rigging a proton beam strong enough to take it out, but they'll need more time. <laughs> We didn't mean to double-cross you, Sartan! No! Never! Nay! Nix! Nine! No! It was those scuzzy wuzzies! They intimidated us! Oh, spare us! <laughs> oh, thank you, Sartan! Thank you! Get up! Get up, you treacherous toad bellies! If Cobra loses, I alone shall seize the reins of power. And only stooges to do my bidding. Even second race stooges like you. Now let's get out of here before we're discovered. Oh, you won't regret this. Right, we love being your stooges. Ready? We're nearing the upper level. Increasing thrust. Lift off in ten seconds. Nine. Eight, seven. It's now or never, guys. Yo, Joe! Yeah, right. Yo, Joe! Yeah! Uh, this is for messing with my father. The I chose, brother. Destroy them, brother. Oh, brother, yourself! Hey, Steel Face is shorting out his own 
rocket ship! Shipwreck, Duke's just about ready with that proton beam. So get out of there and don't drag anchor. I suppose this is a bad time to ask you to go out with me. Help me, you fools! My face is magnetized to the controls! Joe will return after these messages. Cars, bumper thumper, blind cider, front ender, and top bopper, each sold separately. You can smash them in the side, Clyde. Bash them in the back, Jack. Yeah. Crush them off the wall, Paul. Get them in the grill, Bill. Then you can fix them and flip them upside down, clown. And drop them off the cliff, Biff. Hot Wheels, Crack Ups, Bumper Thumper, Blind Sider, Front Ender, and Top Opera cars from the Crack Ups collection, each sold separately. Some cars not for use with some sets. New from Hot Wheels by Mattel. Megan, you and Sundance have the prettiest new clothes. I love the way they go together. Don't you, Sundance? I sure do. My little pony, Megan and Pony wear. Dressing you up is fun to do. Each set comes with two outfits, one for Megan and one for My Little Pony. And there are six different sets in all. My Little Pony, Megan and Pony wear. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Megan and Pony wear sold together. Each set sold separately from Hasbro. Follow me! I am 
the new leader of the Decepticons. Those jets sound like they're gonna land in our laps. That's because they are. Hey, those aren't jets. They're Decepticons. Run for it! Mayday, Decepticons, send help. All right, you overgrown bolt buckets, halt. We've got you covered. My transistors are trembling. Get out of here, man! Who needs Megatron? The Earth's energy shall be ours. Soundwave, prepare the Energon cubes. Conflict zone ahead. Autobots, roll! What was that? Just your friendly neighborhood Decepticon records. Cannon chat and start kicking pig iron! One best coming up! It sure is! You feel tough enough for another go-round? Sure thing, Braun. Let me at him. Cliff jumper, above you! You're about to become instant junk! Try picking on a mechanism your own size! Stop! Decepticons, retreat! Look, pay for this prime! Not so fast, Soundwave. Transform, you fool! Now! Blue Streak, Prowl, follow them. But don't bite off more than you can shred. <laughs> Who, me? Come on, Prowl! Autobots, roll! The leader you turned out to be, Starscream! Shockwave, I must get back to Earth. There's no telling what damage that fool Starscream has done in my absence. You'll know soon enough, Megatron. Starscream, Thundercracker, you two look like Optimus Prime ran you through a laser power trash compactor. Megatron, you're still alive! Don't sound so pleased. Now pay attention. We will attack the laboratory as planned. The antimatter formula will give us the key to ultimate power. Wonderful, Megatron. With your leadership, we can't fail. Leadership, my sign function. If we don't get parts to repair ourselves, we'll conk out before we get your precious formula. Replace your parts and be quick about it. Meet me in the desert near the laboratory in five billion astroseconds. Have a safe journey, Megatron. Reflector will be back soon with the lab report. Excellent. Hi, Chip. Welcome back. Chips back. Great to see you guys. No kind words from me? Wow, well, I've never met an Autobot before. Now, let me get you through our security doors. Formula is gonna be a piece of oil cake! 
Gee, Chip, what are you? Some kind of VIP? Ah, come on, Spike. Yes, that's exactly what he is. Our antimatter formula may be top secret, but without Chip's help, it would be a mystery to us as well. I thought you were just another pretty face. Chip, I asked you to come by for this. This diskette will let your home computer talk with old Betsy Brainiac here anytime, day or night. Can't wait to test it out. I've never seen a bird like that before. Hey, that's no bird. I. It's Laser Beak! Bumblebee, head for the underground parking entrance. Optimus Prime! We cannot wait for Starscream! We must attack the laboratory now! I'll get on my computer and warn Dr. Alcazar at the lab. Prime's already on his way there, and Bumblebee's gonna call Blue Streak and Prowl. What do you mean you can't come? This is an emergency! Yeah, and so is this! We tracked down Starscream's raiding party, Bumblebee. They're munching jets for lunch. I don't like the idea of Megatron getting the antimatter formula. He can't be trusted. Sure can't, man of fooled mouth. And neither can the rest of you. Let's cook a few crankcases. Uh, you don't have Prime and Brawn to bail you out this time. <laughs> Say goodbye to your terminals, Autobots! Maybe we should have gone to help Prime after all. The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Unlimited energy is almost mine! <laughs> this way we'll grab it before they know what hit them. Come on, Dr. Alcazar, acknowledge! Hmm. The Decepticons are coming to steal the antimatter formula? The antimatter formula, Flash Creature! I want it! You're too late. I erased it. He lies. He uploaded the formula to someone. I don't know who, but I soon will. Let this human go. We seek another. Oh, wow. Dr. Alcazar sent me the antimatter formula. I've got to keep it safe. <laughs> Stay clear, Blue Streak. My battle computer is down. I'm helpless. I must link up with another online computer. Searching. Searching. This is Autobot Prowl calling. I need help badly. My battle computer is down. Do you read me? An Autobot? Prowl, this is Chip Chase. Don't worry. I'm assuming control now. <laughs> well, you sure had me execute a fantastic move, Chip. You think just like a regular mainframe. Thanks, Prowl. I'm doing my best. Please keep it up. We make a terrific team. Get him before he can escape! Not so fast! I just hope this works. Why are you directing me to take this action? You'll see in a minute. If 
because they thought that was something. Wait till they see what's next. Now this is a human after my own central processor. Let's get out of here! of an Autobot. Finally, I've located the antimatter formula. Starscream, an outside computer now holds the formula we seek. I will transmit the coordinates. Get the formula, bring it here immediately. Manage, detect, operation, retrieval. <laughs> No, Decepticons. I've memorized the formula, so once I rip this up, there's no way the Decepticons can learn to make the antimatter. You're too late, Ravage. The information's already been destroyed. Excellent, Ravage. <laughs> Dr. Alcazar's lab. I thought we'd never get here. They got Chip! If you try anything stupid, your little friend is doomed! And even if they don't, you're doomed. <laughs> Transform for action. Now here's my plan. Arrogant flesh creature, did you think you could hide the antimatter formula inside your primitive brain? Formula extracted, Megatron. But you can't use our research for destruction. It's... it's wrong. Get rid of the boy. The time has come to create antimatter! Where's Mirage? Sorry, Chief. I was just getting ready. Uh, so were was we. Uh, that is me and my two um, holographic twins. Fine. Now let's begin Operation Antimatter. And be careful. Hey, I remember seeing that. Now, what's that? Good question. Who said that? There's no one here. I must have static in my rectifiers. Now, that's the smartest thing you've said all day. Really? Hey, what's going on? Now, Soundwave, activate the master computer. Generated antimatter. The key to our conquest of the universe. Bring the energon cubes. No, I won't let you. Increase power to maximum potential. And I thought I ordered someone to get rid of that boy. With pleasure. Hold it right there! Who said that? We did. We did. We did. Blast them! Chip! Boy, am I glad to see you. Your reunion will be short-lived. Stick it in your optic sensor, garbage can! Okay, guys. Let's haul cylinders! <laughs>
the Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Autobots, we've suffered losses, but we've not lost the war. For the moment, we will return to headquarters for repairs. Autobots, transform! <laughs> Autobots is now at hand. Powered by antimatter energon cubes, I will reduce them to dust molecules. Ouch! You guys look like the guests of honor at a 50 car pileup. Dad, you and Ratchet, you've got to put them back together again and fast. Oh, you guys are in pathetic shape. Oh, that's a very sensitive junction. Uh, this is all my fault. Megatron would never have gotten the antimatter formula if I hadn't memorized it. There's no way you could have erased your brain. Anyway, I got a much better use for it. There's a little project I'm working on, and I think you two guys can help. <laughs> this time, none of the Autobots will escape. Total victory shall be mine! Hey, everybody, listen up! Teletran just picked up the Decepticons. They're on their way! I don't have to tell you what's ahead of us. They've got to be stopped, and we're the only ones who can do it. They're within attack range. When we're done with them, they're going to wish they'd never been assembled. <laughs> All right, bro, let's go. OK, big boy, let's see how tough you are. Hey, check out this move. The one thing you show us are forgetting is... ME! Ah! Ah! Hey, I get the feeling our jet judo needs a little more work. Oh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Transform the Autobots into atomic particles. Hey, get me out of here! I am invincible. No one can stand against me. No one. Nail him! Never! All right, guys. It's now or never. Then let's do it. <laughs> Last, the extermination of Optimus Prime! Okay, Prime, let's hit it! Skyward, help! Get the anti-matter gun! You little fool! You're no match for Skywalk! Spike! For that, I'll blast you first! Not if Wheeljack's invention works, you won't! Computer override accomplished. New target selected. Spike! We did it! What's going on? I'm not in control of my own wrenches! Help! 
sky warp, you fool! Teletran has overridden your reflexes and my antimatter's reaching ignition temperature! I've got to get rid of it before it destroys me! <laughs> of our victory! Decepticons, retreat! Retreat! Congratulations, Chip. You saved the day. You're a hero. I am? I did? <laughs> really? You sure did. You may not be an Autobot, but when you rolled for broke back there, you sure could have fooled me. We're proud to have you as our friend. One small boy came between me and mastery of the universe. But soon revenge and victory will be mine. The Transformers will return after these messages. Psykill has sent two renegade Gobots to trap the Guardians. Gobots sold separately. You cover the air, Hero. Tux, I'm picking up Leader One on my radar. Renegade. Lip top to the rescue. Take this, Tux and Zero. Glad you dropped in, Flip Top. Gobots. Tux, Zero, Flip Top, and Leader One each sold separately from Tonka. <laughs> Crystal Swift Twins, Starburst Shira, and Catra Dog each sold separately. Now, your beautiful wings and magic horn. I want Crystal Swift Twins. My dazzling Starburst cape will stop you. And shined again. I think Catra has seen the light. Starburst Shira and Crystal Swift Twins each sold separately. New from the Princess of Power collection. Catra also sold separately. Break. I don't like this. Whoa! What's happening? Whoa! Where are we? Look out! Fear not, Ranger. Barbarian, magician, thief, cavalier, and acrobat. was Venger, the force of evil. I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Indeed. 
What a coincidence that on the very day of Starfall, the only one who can fulfill the prophecy and end my reign as queen escapes from your dungeon. You have until tonight to recapture him. The prophecy must not come true. You will not allow it to, will you, my king? <laughs> thanks, Uni. And thank you, Mr. Presto, for your magic. That electric razor thing, it's amazing. H how did you... Hey, uh, no big deal. Uh, what's your name again? I'm Kosar. And uh, what was her name again? Diana. Um, where did you say you escaped from? <sighs> from the city of Turad. The queen locked me in her dungeon 10 years ago. Oh, it's great to be free and to see people, too. You've been in prison for 10 years? Huh. What'd you do, rob a bank? That's just it. I didn't do anything. It's what I could do tonight that scares the queen. You see, uh, it's a long story. And a story you must tell, Kosa. <gasps> dungeon Master! Hey, it's OK. It's okay, he's on our side. Yeah, Dungeon Master knows everything. Hey, let's not go overboard. Thank you for the compliment, but the Cavalier is right. I do not know everything, but I do know of a hundred thousand souls living in terror, hoping tonight they will be free. You know them, don't you, young man? The people of Tarad, their only hope for freedom is the chance that an old, old prophecy might come true tonight. What prophecy? A legend a thousand years old. And on the night of Starfall, the child of the Stargazer shall come from a faraway land to stand in the Temple of Light. The demon shall be banished, and the child shall journey home. What's all that supposed to mean, Dungeon Master? Ask the child of the Stargazer. Help the child do what must be done, and you will see the way home. The way home? Who is this child of the Stargazer? I am. I was born in a faraway land. My father was an astrologer, a Stargazer. When I was eight years old, Queen Sirith found out and, and threw me in her dungeon. What a rotten deal. Well, let's get you back there and save that city. No, Sheila. You would all be in great danger. Hey, you're looking at guys who defeat wicked queens for breakfast. Relax, the situation's under control. Dungeon Master? Who are those guys? Now where'd he go? Stay here. No, it's me they're after. Nah. Hey, Kosar, don't let her kid you. Diana's made first place in the state gymnastic finals two years straight. Yeah, she's got enough gold medals to start her own bank for you to rob. Eric! Hey, you guys, look! Yeah, one guess where they're heading. The city of Turan. Soon they'll return with ten times their number. It's me they're after, not you. Wait, Hank, Eric, where are you going? <laughs> Where do you think? Please, don't. Kosar, would you relax? It's simple. 
We get you to the city, you stand in that temple of light, you save your people, and we go home, just like Dungeon Master said. Piece of cake. The queen will probably thank us for getting rid of the demon for Piece of cake. No. Queen Cirith is the demon. Oh, hold the cake. You fools! It is only hours until Starfall, and Kostar is still free! You have failed! You must be punished! Father, you've already risked your life letting Kostar escape. I know he'll get back inside the city, but it will be for nothing if he can't get inside the temple. We will open the temple, but not this way. Droga, you must wait. Our people have waited a thousand years for this night. You expect me to do nothing? Droga, no! The temple cannot be opened that way, my son. Sirith's magic seals it. But there is another way. So how much farther to that city, anyway? You, you think we'll make it in time? Kosar said it's somewhere beyond those hills. Maybe a couple hours or so. We'll make it. Hey, where is Kosar anyway? Back there, with Diana, in love. And where's Uni? Back there, with Kosar, in love. Machines that fly carrying people inside? Whew. Diana, your world sounds very strange to me. Nah, it's normal. This is the weird place. Of course, it can be pretty wonderful, too, sometimes. Like now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there. I, uh, guess we'd better get going. Eric, where is she? Too bad, old buddy. Better get used to it. She's run off with another guy. She has not! Sorry, short stuff. It it happens to the best of us. Who are you calling short stuff? Hey, it's just a figure of speech. Well, just watch how you figure. Well, excuse me. Only hours until Starfall. After a thousand years of terror, do the fools think I can be defeated by a mortal? Kosar is out there, somewhere. I cannot risk waiting for him any longer. I must bring him here now. Kosar, what's wrong? Do you ever get the feeling something's gonna happen? Something... I don't know. <laughs> don't worry, Kosar. You're with friends. And guess what? We have something in common. We do? Yeah. We're both from faraway places. You from another land, and me from another world. That's right. And not only that, but your father was a stargazer, and my dad is a... <laughs> Suggestion? in the city. Two of you? The spell was to bring me only the child of the stargazer. 
No matter. I have you. Having us and holding us are two different things. Let's get out of here! <laughs> Stop! Joe! Are you crazy? We did that. Hey, I do that kind of stuff all the time. Twice on Tuesdays. You do? No, silly. I was just kidding. So which way to this temple of light? Come with me. You will never reach the temple of light. Never! What is this, the 4th of July? Even if Diana and Kosar could see the flares, which they can't, they couldn't signal back. I still say if we find that city, we'll find them. Yeah? And just where would you like us to start looking, Eric? Kosar's the only one who could guide us there. Hey, maybe this will show us the way. You dummy, this is a road map of Pittsburgh. We're lost and he gives me a map of... Hmm. I found better stuff in the bottom of a cereal box than in that dumb hat. Okay, wise guy. You got a better idea? Yeah. Yeah, we, we ought to... We should just... Oh, why are you bugging me? Ask him! Dungeon Master! Dear me! What caused this? Come on, Dungeon Master. No riddles this time. Diana and Kosar are in real trouble. We've got to find them. And soon for it is very near the time of Starfall. Kosar must reach the Temple of Light, or the Demon Queen will rule for another thousand years. Your friends can be found in the city of... Hey, hot flash from the newsroom. We figured that out ourselves. How do we get there? Follow the first star of evening. But be warned, one among you will have to choose between home and the heart. Hey, everybody! Look at that! Dungeon Master, what do we do when we... He's gone again? Like he said, let's follow that star. They didn't see us. What now? How much time until the Starfall thing? There's enough time to get you out of the city, then I'll return to the temple, alone. No way! I can't leave you. I know, Diana. I feel the same way. I've known you less than a day, but I... I care about you more than I can explain. Me too. So forget about going alone. Diana, no. Sirith will have the temple guarded. She's a demon, not of this world. She must destroy me or the prophecy will come true and I don't want you there if she wins. That's why I'm going. Remember the prophecy, the child of the stargazer shall come from a faraway land to stand in the temple of light. That's you, right? Well, yeah. It's also me. What? I come from a world farther away than you do. And my father is an astronomer. I'm the child of a stargazer too. Is this one of those jokes from your world I don't understand? I'm not joking. One of us will make it into that temple. Now, how do we do it? Maybe I can help. It's all right. He's my friend. I knew you'd make it. Father showed me a secret way into the Temple of Light. Hurry! Look! Starfall. six-foot-tall rabbits have you seen before? Cut the chatter! We've got to find the Temple of Light before they catch us! Don't look now, but I think we found it! Huh. What was your first clue? You are in league with the child of the Stargazer, and you will share his fate! Yeesh! Yuck! What? I ought to have my...
my head examined for doing this, but here goes. Stop them! Yeah! Hey! <laughs> I made it! Congratulations, fool. You have reached your doom. That's it! <gasps> Koshar! Don't! And always. Never! <laughs> the prophecy has failed! No, it hasn't! Look! Diana, no! I, too, am the child of a stargazer. Let the prophecy be fulfilled! Prophecy be fulfilled. No! Thank you, dear child. My people are free. You have done more good than you can ever know. But I've lost him. I've lost Kosar. That is not so, my child. You knew him a long, long time ago. And you shall know him again in times to come. What do you mean? Where has he gone? To a place among the stars. A place beyond your understanding. He has gone home. But he will remember you. And you shall meet him again. Diana, do you hear? Do you hear what you have done? Listen, Diana. Listen to the people you have set free. TV. No TV. What now? Hello, I'm Pee-wee Herman. Talking Pee-wee is really cool, cool. He's naughty. I know you are, but what am I? Soon <laughs> you'll be that way too. <laughs> Whatever you may do, 
It's so much fun when he's with you. Banana sandwich? Arr! You'll go wacko. You'll go crazy. With Twunk and Peewee. From Matchbox, for you and your kid, Cherry sold separately. What's that? Major luck. I think I know what you're thinking. Am I going to show the Talking Peewee commercial every single time I show Peewee's Playhouse? And the answer is yes. Yes, of course I am. It's a Talking Peewee doll. It's a funny commercial. The woman singing in the background. And most of all, there are monkeys dressed as people with human voiceovers. That never fails to get a laugh out of me. If you want to make me laugh, show me monkeys, especially when they're trying to do human things. It is very funny to me. I will always laugh at it. It's a sure way to make people laugh, or at least me laugh. And if you don't like it, well, just be glad I'm not showing the Pee Wee crack commercial. In fact, maybe you're not so lucky. This is crack, rock cocaine. It isn't glamorous or cool Hello? <laughs> or kid stuff. Hey, you see those two guys over there? I need you to kill them for me. It's the most addictive kind of cocaine. <laughs> if you don't have any snow at your house, just use 20 pounds of coke. And it can kill you. <laughs> What's really bad is nobody knows how much it takes. Hit it, cocky! So every time you use it, you risk dying. It isn't worth it. Look, everybody wants to be cool, but doing it with crack isn't just wrong. It could be dead wrong. I don't want to wake up. 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 Oh, 
I knew where Antarctica was. Maybe I can hear. <laughs> <laughs> Weather alert. Weather alert. Hey, that's Mr. Kite. We're going to have some rain, Pee Wee, and from the looks of those clouds, it's going to be a big storm. Are you sure? Absolutely. sure that nothing's in the way and don't throw it at anybody else. Ready? One, two, three, fly them! days are fun. We're just getting started. There's thousands of things you can do on a rainy day. Um, like, uh, um.
Jamie speaking. Hi, Jamie. I just called to say I won't be able to come over today because of the rain. Well, I'll just take a rain check. <laughs> <laughs> What's that on your head, Miss Vaughn? Oh, I have to keep my hair covered in wet weather. Why? <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Scary. Woo! Ha! <laughs> well, bye, Miss Vaughn. Bye, Kiwi. Bye.
you were watching the cartoon, I made a snack. Hot chocolate. <laughs> Hot chocolate is the perfect beverage for a rainy day. And it's so easy to make. Come on. <laughs> The way to make hot chocolate is, you pour some chocolate and some milk into a pan, heat, and stir. Mmm, <laughs> chocolatey. <laughs> hey, Pee Wee, aren't you gonna use any whipped cream? Of course, I almost forgot. <laughs> oh, Globy, what would I ever do without your help? <laughs> That's my department. <laughs> Good idea. Once I saw a show, it had an alien in it. It was a green alien. And like, he was this big. And he came out of the um, USA. And he made friends. So then he was a nice creature. But he was big. But he was then um, he turns good. He gave them flowers. And he hugged them and kissed them. He says, I love you, and you're the best girl in the whole white world. And she had a whole box of donuts. There was only one more left in the box because I ate them all. <laughs> Driving 
Hey, what's the matter, Pee Wee? Bored, Randy. Bored? There's plenty of things to do on a rainy day. I know, Randy, but I've done all of them already. No, you haven't. See this phone here? Yes, I've called everyone I know. So? Call some people you don't know. What do you mean? Here, I'll show you. Hello. Hello. Is your refrigerator running? Why, yes. Well, you better go and catch it. <laughs> Try one. No, Randy, that's not fun. It's not nice to make prank phone calls. Don't be such a chicken. Here, it's ringing. Hello? Hello. Is your refrigerator running? I've had just about enough of this. My husband is a police officer. Daryl. Yes, dear. What's your name, kid? Pee Wee Herman. Will you listen to me, Pee Wee Herman? Making prank phone calls is against the law. If I wasn't such a nice guy, I'd take you downtown and throw you into jail. Then you'd have a criminal record for the rest of your life. Would you like that? Uh, no, sir. I mean, no, officer. Yeah. All right. I'll let you go this time. But next time, you're going to jail. <laughs> There won't be a next time. I've learned my lesson, honest. Randy? <laughs> Randy? Stop raining. <laughs> wish? Did somebody say wish? Jumbie, please. I wish it would stop raining. I wish it would stop raining. You only get one wish. <laughs> please, Jumbie. I wish it would stop raining. All right, then. You and all the boys and girls at home, repeat after me. Mecca lecca high, mecca hiney ho. Mecca lecca high, mecca hiney ho. Mecca lecca high, mecca chani ho. Mecca lecca high, mecca chani ho. Mole mecca chala, mecca mole mamae. Mole, clip, and later in there. All the elements, hear my refrain. Start the sun and stop the rain. The wish is granted. Long live John. Look. A rainbow. How beautiful. Hey, look, everybody. The rain is stopped and the sky is cleared up. Look at the rainbow. Gigi, it's an arc of prismatic colors. Pee -pee -pee -wee. I think it's pretty. What a beautiful day. <laughs>
Hey, Barney, look what I found in my daddy's closet. You know, I bet you this is from the big one. You know, WW2. Boy, I bet them were some great times. I know, because I never miss Hogan's heroes on WDBJ7. You know, with Schultz and Hogan and Commandant Clint. Hogan's heroes. Weekdays on your hometown station. You know, Vern, this must be some kind of a cigarette lighter. I know nothing. I see nothing. <coughs> Gosh, Vern, you trying to kill us all? Walking around all the time with that weed hanging out of your mouth? Don't you know how deadly that thing is? You're just asking for a case of the big C, Cancer City, Chemotherapy Hotel. <coughs> I care about you, Vern. That's why I'm warning you. You better give up them cigarettes, buddy. Or the groundhogs will be bringing you your mail. Know what I mean? in the parks throughout the universe and the planet Earth will be ours. I, Vendor, will be ruler of the solar system. No. Hey, Vern, I just love these outer space movies, don't you? This is my all-time favorite one, too. This is called Attack of the Moon People, and this is where the evil Vendor sends his atomic virus space pod to Earth to paralyze everybody so him and his evil buddies can just waltz in big as you please and stomp the living daylights out of everybody. Vern! Oh, no! It's Vendor's moon pod. Oh, no! We're gonna be paralyzed, and Vendor's gonna come in here and stomp the living daylights out of us. Oh, no! Hey, Vern. Today's your lucky day. We knew you wouldn't want to oversleep, Vern. We only do it once a week, Vern. Me and all the other guys, Vern. We even brought the pies, Vern! Yes, you're in a speed war with a star and a moral and a big chuckle hip trip double hip super super green show. You know what I mean? No! Hey, Vern, we move your furniture and now we're gonna fire up the barbecue, Vern. We owe it all to you, Vern. But now you gotta move, Vern! Hey, Vern! Hey, Vern! Hey, Vern, it's me! I'm on TV! Hey, Vern, it's outer space. It's an atomic virus moon pod, all right, Vern. I don't like the looks of this. This must be the amount of time we've got before this thing blows up and spews forth its nasty little germs that will paralyze the world as we know it, not to mention lowering your property value. It says we've got 48 hours to figure out a way to get this thing back into outer space before the clock runs out. Vern, one false move, one loud noise, and... <laughs> Don't even breathe. Sergeant Glory! Then, huh? Sergeant Glory here. Now listen up, you little space cadets. Today's class is outer space. We have learned that we are all part of this great solar system, but it's up to us to keep it in order. We can do so by following two simple rules. Rule number one, pick up your toys and clean up your space. Rule number two, obey all rules. As you were. Chuck, right there's my brother Bobby. We're studying to be astronauts. We're gonna do it here in our own backyard. We got a centrifugal force machine hooked up. You wanna watch? Yeah. Those centrifugal forces can really flatten you out if you don't know what you're doing. You ready? Blast off! Faster, Bobby, faster! Those two whip forces are about to catch up with you! Oh, Bobby. Why don't you be the moon for a while? You could sit and just take a spin around the earth in style. I've never gotten one vacation, even though I almost always shine. I gladly trade my favorite consolation just to see an unemployment line. Why don't you be the moon for a while? You know, Vern, maybe this isn't the Vendor's moon pod. Because in the movie, the guy that touched it turned two different colors. Or he broke out in polka dots. I don't know. I'm probably only just half right. Uh-oh. Mom, I'm bored. Well, honey, why don't you take the UFO and buzz the Earthlings? Well, okay, but can I bring one home this time? 
All right, but you're going to have to feed it and clean up after it. Well, I will, I promise. Just think, my very own Earthling. Spaceships, aliens from another planet, zapping everyone and his brother with ray guns. Go on, thank you. This stuff is for the birds. There's got to be something better to read than this childish fantasy gibberish. Hey kids, it's time for Wani Don School of Hollywood Sound Effects. Hi kids. Hey, did you hear something? Boy, I sure did. Today, let's learn about the sounds I did in a movie called The Zombies Are A-Comin'. The Zombies Are A-Comin'. It sounds like alien monsters being absorbed into the human skull. It goes something like this. First, you take the meaty part of your hand, wrap it around your jowl, put your fingers to your other jowl, and blow. <laughs> Week, kids. Don't forget. <laughs> you know, Burton, I can't figure out why I didn't think of this before. Who would have thought saving the world could be this easy? Burnt. In a few minutes, this little germ-infested moon pod should be up and away. Before you can say, Ernest P. Worrell, defender of Ah, the neighborhood. Uh oh. Be sure to stay tuned for the heartwarming adventures of my father, the clown, as Eddie, Skeeter, Mike, and Mom worm their way into your hearts with that hilarious mixture of seltzer, cream pie, and traditional family values. My Father, the Cloud. <sighs> hey, Vern, it's Ernest. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, I'm Matt Finish, photographer at large. I'm so spaced out, the Space Commission has designated me to be the official photographer to the stars. I've been practicing. Whoa, whoa. Please be okay, huh? So remember, shoot the moon. You just might hit a star. <laughs> Burn. It's true. It's true. That thing really is the real, real moon pod. Because, Burn, just like in the movie, I feel like I've been possessed with, with superpowers. Because one minute I feel okay, and then, golly, Bob, howdy, Burn. I start feeling real weird, and am I piercing the void here, Burn? Am I making myself clear? Hello, and welcome to the Galaxy Room Restaurant. I'm Willie, the homemade robot, and I'll be your waiter today. Allow me to tell you about our special. First, we have the onion rings of Saturn, then the Neptuna seafood salad with grated moon Swiss cheese, and of course, our scrumptious French Big Dipper sandwich. Now, will that be three separate checks or all those heads yours? <laughs> oh, just a joke. Just a joke. Last night, I heard my daddy say to my mama that her dinner was out of this world. I thought they had dinner on the patio. Well, ain't grown out your talk, buddy. Know what I mean? Playing. Playing. Vern, it's the giant slingshot principle. Just like they use in that movie, Attack of the Moon, people. All you do is attach your ends to a couple of your larger trees. The aim is critical. But if everything goes according to plan, this thing ought to go out the same way it came in, know what I mean? One, two, two and a half, three, and one. It didn't work in the movie either, know what I mean? This is it. My moment in the sun. My greatest invention. Soon, everyone in the world as we know it 
will wake up to my new device. It's quick. It's convenient. It's evil. It's sinister. And it's... It's gone. A viral moon pod was sighted today in the vicinity of Vern's house. Details at 11. Obviously, it has a mind of its own. But where is it? Oh, hi, Dust Bunny. Hey, what you thinking, Ernie, baby? I just wish I knew more about space. <laughs> you ought to be an expert. You got a head full of it. <laughs> Gesundheit, Mark. Oh, hi. I'm Mac, and my roommate George here feels like lizards have been kind of left out of the space program. George says they've sent monkeys, mice, and men up in space. So now, he wants to be the first lizard. You ready, George? Shoot for the moon, George! Oh, and remember, dinner's at 6 o'clock. No, these are different cameras. These are uh, documentary cameras. They're different. They could be grainy. You can bust them. Yeah, see, there's another shoot guy. Ones, but... Yeah, you can shoot at them. People, they're used to dropping them and things. That looks better for the documentary footage. They like tested them and bombed, didn't they? Uh-oh. Things aren't going well. <laughs> That's always good for documentary footage. That's it. Then they have this shot of like... <laughs> Seems the crowd is moving around. That's always good for documentary footage or for the animal <laughs> specials like this. Oh, well, this, this is what it's like back here. We're just hanging, uh, fishing. Yeah, I'm just crew. Uh, we just rubbing elbows back here with these stars. We're, we're teamster Bye -bye. replacements. We're stand-ins for teamsters. We're part of this whole thing, the program here. That's it. Job trainees. How about it? The hell's wrong? That thing ain't adjusted. No, we have to... Oh, Jesus. We were just having a personal conversation. Just discussing life as we know it. Look at the size of this! Do you like this? Our accessories important. I, I think, think very much are. so, for hunters especially. I know. You never know when an animal is just going to jump on you, and I you know. don't know if he's going to match your coat. That's it, or if he's going to become one. <laughs> that's, that's the most important thing. You know, I think live furs are very important for the women in the 90s. Yeah. If you're actually wearing an animal and someone you don't like is there, you just say, sick. Hurt them. That's not bad. That's no. it. Pause. Fur will just fly. Fur. And if you have a baby seal on, if you're near a pool, you're fucked. <laughs> He'll drown you. Ah! We'll be right back. We're talking fashion. I'm Bob, and this is our show, In Your Ear. You got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby. You got the right thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You got the right one. There's only one right one, baby. You got the right one, baby. With 100% Nutrisweet. sun rises to greet him, and in its low, warm light he stands like some sort of, of pagan god or deposed tyrant. Staring out over the city, he's sworn to, to stare out over. And it's evident just by looking at him that he's got some pretty heavy things on his mind. Oh, 
Patrol, Morning Patrol, Coffee. Good morning, Arthur! And a fine morning it is. I'm up, I'm up, Morning Patrol. I, I got it. No! No patrols today, small friend. Today is our day off. We're going to spend quality time together. We're going to Dinosaur Grotto. Look, guided tours daily of a working dinosaur dig. Come watch our team of expert scientists dig up real dinosaur bones. Dinosaur bones, sleepy sidekick. Fun and educational. Whatever. Uh, as long as we're back by six and Dot isn't kept waiting. Ah, yes. The sister. That's right. And she still doesn't approve of my superhero lifestyle. I only asked her to dinner to show her that I'm still a sane and loving person. Family values! You're crazy for that sibling! <laughs> uh, yeah, so tonight, can you just tone it uh, down? Not a problem, gentle Avenger. I will suppress my every urge. <laughs> As you can plainly see, these giant reptiles ruled the prehistoric Earth for eons. They weren't very bright, <laughs> but they were very, very big. And that concludes this afternoon's <laughs> tour. Once again, I'm Dinosaur Neil, and as chief paleontologist here at the Grotto, I'd like to thank you all for coming. And remind you that we have t-shirts and other souvenirs right here in the gift shop. Consume! <laughs> Eager, him. I must say it's a pleasure to see superheroes taking such an interest in science. Wonderful tour, Dinosaur Neil. I never knew I could learn so much. <laughs> yeah. No, just to retain it. Dinosaur Neil, look, we found a femur. Hmm, a potosaurus, beautifully preserved. Just what I need. You boys like science. Why not come back to my tent? I'll show you the kind of science you can't find in a textbook. I believe I can grow a dinosaur with the help of these fossils. Well, I don't know. Uh, that doesn't sound possible. Mm -hmm. It is. I saw it in a movie once. My machine synthesizes living tissues from fossilized DNA patterns. Hey, smooth. Look here. I've already grown some dinosaur tissue. I have to keep it in a solution of acetosalicylic acid. Otherwise, I'm afraid it would just keep on growing indefinitely. I figure I'll have a fully functional organism by the middle of next month. Bad move, Neil. Well, no harm done. Too bad you boys have to leave so soon. If you could stick around, you could catch the fireworks and the parade of extinction. Fireworks? Extinction? Keen. We'd like to, Dinosaur Neil, but we have to... Uh, Tick, uh, we have to make dinner for Dot. We're late. Oh, yeah. Bye, boys. <laughs> Hands! Bigger! Oh, mine! Small! Child-proof cap! Impossible! Uh, oh, that, that's the timer! The fettuccine's ready. Uh, sauce is done. Uh, here, crush this garlic. <laughs> oh, the stink of it! Um, she's here! Uh, oh, Tick, take off that shirt! <clears throat> Dot, hi! <laughs> you, you remember the Tick, don't you? Yes, I remember the Tick. Oh, Dot, you look lovely tonight. Your hair is like a halo of mouse brown fire. Whatever did you do with it? I washed it. Are you okay? You look a little big. Hmm. Well, Arthur, 
there? This is delicious. I'm glad to see you still have time to cook. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> hmm. Uh, oh, the tick tossed the salad. Yes, quite a challenge. Dad really messed you up, didn't he? Hey, God, man, that thing is speaking a language that hasn't been heard on Earth in 4,000 years. Nub! Interrupt tonight's episode of The Mummy Speaks to bring you this special report. Good evening, I'm Sally Vacuum. The authorities have issued a citywide alert. Dinosaur Neil, head paleontologist and tour guide in Dinosaur Grotto, is now 70 feet tall and walking down Main Street. <laughs> As you can see, Neil is still growing. We have with us one of the city's superheroes, Deflator Mouse. Thank you, Sally. Deflator Mouse, can you tell us what the superhero community plans to do about this menace? <sighs> Good question, Sally. I think we'll just, um, sit this one out and wait for the National Guard. So, uh, when's this gonna be on? <laughs> Must save city. Tick, tone it down. <laughs> this cake is delicious, Dot. What is it? Chocolate. A team of expert scientists ready to give you assistance and a big pair of pants! Man, those are big pants. Sauce has the largest trousers in the world! Well, I wouldn't say he's rampaging per se. The National Guard says it won't come unless the dinosaur is officially rampaging. Okay, I think we can confirm that rampage. I'm sorry, Dot. Arthur? Tick? Let's go! <laughs> now you're talking, chum! To action! Well, don't expect me to do the dishes! We've got to cut him off! Maybe I can talk some sense into him. Hey, Dinosaur Neil! What are you doing? Oh, I see. You're rubbing me the wrong way, friend. Acetosalicylic acid. Wait! Wait! Tick! I have an idea! Tick! I'm trapped! In the mustache of a titan! To safety, sidekick! Arthur? Wild hair! Huh? 
got an idea. <coughs> well, mine didn't work. What's yours? Well, this morning, a dinosaur Neil said that he had to keep his dinosaur tissue in a solution of acetosalicylic acid to keep it from growing. Uh, yeah. Tick, acetosalicylic acid is aspirin. If we can give Neil a dinosaur-sized dose of aspirin, he might shrink back to normal. Well, I'll try anything once. Let's see now. We usually recommend two aspirins for an average-sized adult. Now, how much did you say your friend weighs? Hmm, uh, about 180 tons. And still growing. Oh, okay, give us a minute. So, do you think Dot's mad at you? Maybe, but she has to understand that this is what I want to do with my life. Guard. Mm -hmm. This could mean the city needs the human bullet. Fire me, boy! Here you go, boys. This ought to cure what ails them. Wait, sir, wait! We can save him. All we need is five minutes. What can you do in five minutes, civilians? Superheroes, sir. <laughs> We're going to give him an aspirin. Hey! Get back here! You may not know this, sir, but nearly 2,000 years ago, a brew made from white willow leaves was recommended for gout. Today, a remedy based on that same chemical, aspirin, is the most widely used medicine in the world. But aspirin is strong medicine and should be taken only as directed. And children should never, ever take aspirin except under the supervision of their parents or a licensed physician. That's good advice. Hey, Arthur! How are we gonna get Neil to take this pill? I mean, do we have a plan for that? Look out! What? Oh, tick! <laughs> Looks like your friend's being devoured. Okay, everybody! Ready! Aim! No! Give the tick a chance. He's nigh invulnerable. He'll be okay. He's got to be. You can't shoot me away. Superheroes, the Tick, has fed himself to Dinosaur Neil along with an enormous aspirin in a desperate attempt to bring the rampaging reptile under control. The Tick appears to have been devoured in one of the most selfless and heroic acts this reporter has ever witnessed. 
this after a spokesman for the superhero community said that they would, quote unquote, sit it out and wait for the National Guard. This looks kind of bad, doesn't it? Minutes ago, I recorded an exclusive interview with the pharmacist who provided the giant aspirin that may be the key to the dinosaur's downfall. That was quite an aspirin. Oh, I suppose so. Was that the largest prescription you've ever filled? Oh, yes. Uh, but I made a huge cough drop once. And how big was that? Oh, I see. Uh, size of a quarter. Thank you, Sid the pharmacist. Bring him to the pants. Bring him to the pants. silence at the must-go shopping plaza as we all wait to see what fate has befallen the tick. I guess that's about it for the blue guy. But he went down fighting. It can't be. Okay, everybody, let's try this again. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> to the showers with us! So, tell me, Tick, when you were, uh, you know, in my mouth, um, fighting my tongue, was that uh, weird for you or anything? Uh, unique, Neil. Unique. But all in a day's work for a superhero. Well, you saved my life. Oh, don't thank me. Thank Arthur. The aspirin was his idea. Well, Arthur, I have to admit it. You guys saved Dinosaur Neil and the whole city. But I'm still not going to do the dishes. It is really good to be human again. Well, once again, my friend, we find that science is a two-headed beast. One head is nice. It gives us aspirin and other modern conveniences. But the other head of science is bad. Oh, beware the other head of science, Arthur! It bites! And it can really ruin a good day off.
Attention, Somerset. I am Star Colonel Nikolai Malthus of the Jade Falcon Clan. A full trinary stands ready to conquer your planet. What forces dare oppose us? Is this some kind of joke? You dare to refuse my bajol? Refuse your what? Prepare to feel the wrath of the Falcon's claws. This is Commander Steiner. Enemy dropships are approaching. All staff and cadets execute defense plan Alpha. This is not a drill. Steady, people. We still don't know what we're up against. What in the name of Kerensky? <laughs> They're not like any battle mechs I've ever seen. Your insolence has provoked the fury of the clans. Prepare to be destroyed. Prepare yourself, pal. Star Colonel Kristen Redmond. Five against three, Nikolai. <laughs> Hardly an honorable conquest. Very well, Kristen. I shall dispense with these inner sphere surrats alone. Now switching to enhanced imaging. Let's show these creeps what kind of mech warriors we turn out at the Academy. So these are the warriors of the inner speed. Pathetic. I'm okay, but my mech's finished. Don't worry, I can get him. You're on your own. Bah, this is pointless. Not even a challenge. Here's your challenge. Easy prey. Warning, reactor shielding breached. Catastrophic failure in 10 seconds. Whatever you are, it's gonna take a lot more than that to conquer Somerset. Not just Somerset, little free birth warrior. Soon all the planets of the Inner Sphere will belong to the clans. This is the Inner Sphere. Thousands of planets colonized by humankind. Once it was united under the Starlight. But for the last 300 years, it has been consumed by savage wars. Until a new enemy appeared. Mysterious invaders known as the clans. Powerful and ruthless, they struck like lightning, attacking every sector at once. But they made one big mistake. They attacked my home planet. Now in the spirit of the Star League, ancient enemies have reunited. And we're gonna take back our galaxy.
My only chance is to take out the leader. Negative, Kylie. Pull back to 120 meters and engage with your auto cannon. I know what I'm doing, Lieutenant Spector. Kylie, wait! The leader's in a... Yes, I didn't pass, huh, Major Steiner? How can I pass you if you don't stay alive, Kylie? Teamwork means looking out for the people under you. And accepting input from your tactical operations officer. Like when I try telling you the leader is piloting an axe man. It's like the Major always says. Information is ammunition. Next time, look before you leap. What did you expect? Throwing an aerojock into a battle mech. Flyers don't belong in mechs. Zero, as my loyal assistant, you should remember my other credo. Cross-training is the key to victory. Specialization is the way to defeat. Catchy slogans may win you points on a backwater planet like Somerset, but here, at the Nagel Ring, we're a little more sophisticated. The word you're looking for is outdated. Uh, Major? How about another champ? For a fellow Somersetter? The Major has no authority to give you a retest, even if you are from the same pathetic planet. <clears throat> don't you have exams to grade, Lieutenant? Yes, Major. Pity I don't have the Royal Steiner name to buy me rank. I'm sorry, Kylie. Not everybody's cut out for this program. <clears throat> Adam, turn on the vid screen. Somerset's been attacked. The Intelligence Secretariat intercepted these battle transmissions. They were the only messages to make it out. Their battle mechs are more powerful than anything we've ever encountered. Somerset never had a chance. Those lousy drags have gone too far this time. That invasion force wasn't from the Draconis Combine. It's from beyond the periphery. Beyond? We don't know who they are. We don't even know if they're human. What about my brother? Did... did Andrew make it? The 10th Lyran Guard, our best and brightest. And I'm not just saying that because your son Victor is among them. Are they soldiers marching to glory or lambs to the slaughter? How can we defeat an enemy we know nothing about? Presenting Major Adam Steiner, Highness, by your request. I requested no such thing. Who are you? A distant cousin, Highness. Using the Steiner name to gain an audience? I hereby volunteer to lead a unit to liberate my home world, Somerset. Request denied. Somerset is only one of many planets hit by these mysterious invaders. The Draconis Combine may seize this opportunity and likewise attack. This isn't just about Somerset, Archon. It concerns the entire Commonwealth. I'm listening. With a small independent unit heading towards Somerset, I could have the freedom to jump through all the occupied systems and gather information about the invaders. Until we know something about them, what hope do we have of defeating them? Hmm, your proposal has merit, but I'm afraid I haven't a ship to spare. I'm sorry, Major. All hands prepare for hyperspace jump. And not a moment too soon, yeah? Enemy space is no place for a civilian merchant ship. I'll rest much easier once we've returned to the Draconis Combine. Not to worry, Captain Sun. My company will reward you well for this assignment. Yeah, Franklin Song. But how will I spend it on a Bedcom penal colony? Mayday! Mayday! Situation critical! Extensive damage! Requesting emergency docking! A trick! Tell them our docking caller is an operative. Ignore a distress signal? They'll take my license and the ship. She cut the gun. I... Uh... Proceed with the docking, Captain. Konnichiwa, Dr. Nakamura. They report no injuries, but let us be prepared for anything. Konnichiwa, Kirita creeps! Drop your weapons! Now! Captain Miles Hawkins, Federated Commonwealth! You smugglers are busted! Lousy fed gum pigs! So you want to play? Uh, 
Smuggling Fedcom noisemakers into the Draconis Combine. <laughs> Not too neighborly now, is it, Baca boy? Ohio, Captain. And please, enjoy your stay in the Federated Commonwealth. We should have been on Somerset. We could have made a difference. We'd have only shared their fate. My family is 250 light years away, and I'm stuck here on Tharkad. Pity your cousin couldn't get you a command. Got any other relatives? Greetings, Cousin Adam. Cousin Adam? It has come to my attention that a smuggling ship from the Daconis Combine has been confiscated and is presently headed towards Thalcad. Thank you for the information, Archon, but what's that got to do with me? You know, Adam, under the current state of emergency, a confiscated vessel may be commandeered by a field-grade officer. Like a major, for instance. I see. Thank you, Archon. I'm certain you will bring honor to the family name. I won't let you down. Pilot, we need to get to Orbital Station Prometheus, military priority. Kylie? Thanks to a certain instructor who denied me a passing grade, I'm now a fairy jock. Muchas gracias, Major. Jump to the Hamilton system. We can shave a couple of weeks off the trip. We'll hit Somerset, ready to fight. Somerset? You guys are going to Somerset? Kylie, if you don't mind, we're... Don't even dream about it. This mission's treacherous enough without you. And so, I'm offering you all an opportunity. You can continue your duties aboard the drop ship Kwaidan and jump ship Katana, but under my command. It's a dangerous mission. But these invaders are a threat to us all. We would rather eat vegan slug rots than serve with filthy Fedcom sleaze. Yes, I agree. Who are you calling sleaze, you, you stinking little drack? <laughs> It would appear that your little mission has been scrubbed. I am retaking possession of this craft. <laughs> Anyone else? This foolishness ends now, Franklin San. Let us retain some dignity, ya? Yeah? I am a businessman, not a warrior. When this mission ends and the invaders are gone, what happens to us? You'll be free to return to the Draconis Combine, along with your ship. In that case, Major, my answer is yes. No! 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 Remaining aboard will allow us to return this vessel to Isisaki shipping. Is that not an honorable goal? Then, it's settled. So, how long you think you poor Trax will survive under Major Schoolboy? The kid's too wet behind the ears to know real combat from a simulator. And you are more experienced than he? Off Sky Rangers War of 39. 27 missions, 4 field commendations. Very impressive, Captain Hawkins. You've got the job. Oh, uh, Major? I'm authorized to recruit any unassigned personnel. We could use a man like you. Welcome to the unit. Take weeks to get that Kurita stench out of these quarters. Yeah, but look at all this room. Great work, Patch. These are experimental arrow fighters called Banshees. Hmm. Now all we need is someone who can fly them.
Major, I know you're wondering why I decided to sign up with your unit. The truth is, I know what you're up to. You want the Drax to let their guard down so we can attack the Combine, right? It's brilliant. With the Inner Sphere reunited under the Federated Commonwealth, no outside force would dare oppose us. Let's get one thing straight, Lieutenant. Our only hope lies with cooperation. You want to start a war? Do it under someone else's command. Flying Dragon to Sleeping Tiger. I have coordinates for our next hyperspace jump. Dome ship crew is prepared for hyperspace jump to the Hamilton system, Major. Thank you, Captain. Oh, I think I left my stomach behind. <laughs> you have a week till our engines are recharged, and we get to do it all over again. <laughs> Shooting at a jump ship? That's a violation of the Ares Convention. Who are these maniacs? Mercenaries, Adam son, in the employ of my company. What do you know about this? Only that this ship is going back where it belongs. The Draconis come. <laughs> They're taking it back in pieces? This is Franklin Sakamoto. I told you this ship was not to be damaged. We have our orders, Franklin son. <laughs> Your traitorous crew is to be eliminated. Time to choose sides, Captain San. Are you with us or not? I am rather partial to surviving. Then get ready to follow my orders. Captain Hawkins, Lieutenant Ramirez, report to Mech Bay on the double. Mech Bay? Is he nuts? You've got jump jets and all we can do is float. Great plan, schoolboy. Those mercs won't be expecting our kind of firepower. We've still got the element of surprise. Major! Any other bright ideas, Major? I've got you, Zero. Nice job, but we're not out of this yet. Adam, I studied their attack pattern and... I know! Separate the dropship, now! One chance. What in blazes are you doing, schoolboy? Something you've never seen in a textbook, Hawk. Adam, your missile salvo is headed right for us. The missiles target infrared signatures. The heat from the blast confused them. Well, pleasure working with you, Major. that banshee. Yeah! How you doing, Teach? Kylie, what are you doing here? Saving your butt? What's it look like? I don't take kindly to stowaways. Can we argue about it later? That's the last one, kid. That's major kid to you. Let's go home. Last one there, the Vegas slug rat. Think maybe a seasoned vet can learn from a schoolboy? Don't push it, Major. Please, no autographs. Seems uh, specialization has its place after all. A Major? Nagel Ring know you've gone AWOL? Not AWOL if you drafted me into your unit. You forged my name? Begging the Major's pardon, sir. But it's not forgery if you don't report it. Welcome to the first Somerset Strikers. Somerset Strikers? Sounds good to me. We're dropping you with FedCom security on the next jump. Unless you'd rather get off here. Major Steiner, we've just received a message for you from Tharkat. Put it through. Greetings, Major Steiner. I regret to report that the Draconis Combine has suffered as badly from the same invaders that defeated Somerset. The Draconis High Command. 
has approved your unit to operate as a coalition strike force against this mutual threat. The coordinator himself hopes that his subjects will do nothing to bring him dishonor. We live in interesting times. Giri demands that I honor the wishes of my coordinator. I will serve under you for now. We're a motley band, to say the least. You think I can pull them together? We will. For Somerset. And for my brother, Andrew. Attention, scientists, tech, and labor castes of Somerset. You are now Isola, the rightful property of Clan Jade Falcon. Falcon will continue to swoop down on its prey until the glorious day that the entire inner sphere is again under our control. Dinosaurs, but we became the prey. The Lost World Jurassic Park. We were pursuing a parasaur when the dino cycle suffered dino damage. And we were surrounded by screaming raptors. The raptors were all over us. We activated our glide packs to escape, but a pteranodont canceled our flight. Something has survived. Will you? The Lost World Jurassic Park. Look for the mark of Jurassic Park figures and vehicles each sold separately. It's Jurassic Park. The dinosaurs are loose. Tim Murphy snares a Dimetrodon. Grant wrestles with a dangerous Coelophysis. And a Pteranodon battles a spitting Dilophosaurus. He's sold separately. It's happening, but only at Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. The dinosaurs are on a rampage, and only the JP team is tough enough to stop them. Grant fires his net launcher. Ellie launches her grappling hook. Hulk Doom fires a tranquilizer. Each sold separately. It's happening, but only at Jurassic Park. I'm a wild green guy living under the bed. I got a little sock before you turn your head. Like a boat to light. I make a hard jump. My name is Mr. Bumpy. I go bump, bump, bump. Yeah, bump, bump, bump. She's my very best pal. Bump with Molly. She's my favorite gal. Bump with Closet Monster and Destructo too. But those guys don't bother Bumpy. He knows what to do. Say bump. Bump, bump, somebody bump. Hey, everybody bump. Bump, bump, somebody yeah. He goes 100 miles an hour. He's green dynamite. His name is Mr. Bumpy. He goes bumping the night. You can bump with a doll. Bump with a bug. Bump on the ceiling. A bump on the rug. And you can bump too from the east to the west. Just bump with the monster you love best. Say bump. Bump, bump, somebody yeah. Everybody bump. 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 Yeah, he goes a hundred miles an hour, he's green dynamite. His name is Mr. Bumpy, he goes bumping the night. My name is Mr. Bumpy, I go bumping the night. <laughs> <laughs> Tells me there's a treat nearby, and my nose never lies. Oh, Mr. Buffy, where are you? <laughs> What's that? Mr. Bumpy. 
you know, I'm worried about you, Mr. Bumpy. Don't you think you've been eating a few too many socks lately? Ah, socks are good for me, Squishment. Rich in fiber and low in calories. Besides, one more can't hurt. Oh, no. He's gonna fly! Maybe I've been overdoing it a little bit. Hmm, perhaps. Huh. You know, maybe I should lay off socks for 24 hours, but I'm gonna need your help, Squish. I'm here for you, Mr. Bumpy. I'll help you put the pieces back together. Just hope we have enough glue. I'll take you through a 24-step program. It's twice as good as the 12-step program. Thanks, old true blue bud. But, uh, can we start after lunch? I suddenly have this craving for a sock. Don't worry, Mr. Bumpy. I'll keep you away from socks or my name isn't Squishington A. Peabody. Ha! There's no way you'll ever get to a sock now. I booby-trapped the sock drawer. Good, good. Uh-oh. I feel that urge coming on. I guess all of this sock talk has made me hungry. Sock. I must have sock. Nope. Sorry, my business pal, but the sock light is out. Hmm. I wonder what went wrong. Oh, there! A loose screw. Uh oh. What am I gonna do now, Squishmeister? I am but a slave to my urges. I know. Maybe what you need is a trip someplace where you won't be tempted, hmm? Oh, where can I possibly go? Where there are no dirty socks? Socks are common to all modern civilizations, you know. I'll take you to the moon. You'll never find a sock there. Thanks, Squisherino. You're pretty smart for a guy who lives in the bathroom. Three, two, one, blast off! Oh, Squish, did you fill the tanks with regular roll decaf? It seems we're carrying too much weight, but I calculated to the gallon. Wonder how they got there. <laughs> I guess we were wrong. The moon does have socks. There. I've locked away all of the socks. You can't eat what you can't get to. Are you sure this is going to work? You see, I've been so weak. Have I ever let you down, Mr. Bubby? No. You are the truest, bluest buddy a monster could have. And you know me better than I know myself. Problem solved. There's only one key, and I've got it. Squish. You gotta promise not to give me that key, no matter how much I beg. I cross my heart and hope to congeal. Thanks for your help, tough guy. Now, give me the key to show you trust me. Mm-mm. Sorry, Mr. Bumpy, but no can do. I said, <laughs> I want the key, and I want it now. But, but, but I made a promise to you, and the friend never goes back on his... Long time no see, Mr. Bumpy. So, who do you pick for my personal favorite sporting event, the Super Bowl? I want that key. Now there's no way you'll ever get into the safe. That's what you think. Okay, mm-hmm. 
All right, now, I always welcome a new perspective on things, Mr. Bumpy, but, um, you can let me down now. Please. Not until I get that key. Now, cop it up. <laughs> Don't do it, Mr. Bumpy. Are those socks more important than our friendship? Yep. I placed a portable matter antimatter thermite device I bought at the local mini mart inside that safe because I knew Mr. Bumpy couldn't help himself. <laughs> After all, he is my best friend. I'm so proud of you, Mr. Bumpy. You haven't eaten a sock for 24 whole hours. Nothing I couldn't do without willpower. And a little help from a good friend. Oh, everyone, I'm here. It's me, Molly Coddle. Comfort doll extraordinaire. Who needs comforting? Must have comfort. Everybody? Good thing I take credit cards. With every squeeze, I feel the awesome power of comfort surging through my very being. Thank you. Molly Cottle. Ooh, that's me? Must have got up under the wrong side of the bed. <gasps> Squish bud, you look worse than I do. Uh, I got up on the wrong side of the bowl. Hello, Mr. Bumpy. Greetings, Squishington. Look what I got. Stray sock holes. Part of a comforting and nutritious meal. And moisturizing cream for smoother, softer head pedals. Oh, I am so full of comfort, I could scream. Ah! Who was that patchwork comforter? Yellow Bunny, why do you cower so? The closet's growling at me. Fear not. It's only that mean old closet monster. He's no match for me. I can comfort anything. I must go to him. Ah, that hit the spot. I feel like a new monster. <laughs> hey, Molly. Molly? Squishington, where's Molly? Hmm? Oh, probably off comforting somewhere. Hey, Molly, yo! Malibus Maximus! Hey, Molly! You going somewhere, baby? Look at that fabric. It belongs to Molly. <gasps> All right, Bunny. What have you done with her? Who are you working for? Where were you on November 23rd, 1962? Should I give her the sludge treatment? No, I'll talk! She went into the closet to comfort the uncomfortable closet monster! Closet monster! Oh, closet monster! Where are you? I assure you my intentions are purely comforting. There you are. How do you do? My name's... Ah! Might have to put in some overtime on this. What do you know? We match. Soulmates in patchwork. Oh, you poor, sweet, gentle, dainty, misunderstood monster. A little comfort will tame you. Atta monster, shake hands. Play dead. So tell me about yourself. How was your childhood? What were you like as a baby monster? Mm? Have we rescued Molly Cuddle yet? Not yet. First, we gotta make sure this trap will stop the closet monster in case he decides to come after us. There. When the door shuts, the bowling ball ought to roll down and nail him right here. It's working, Mr. Bumpy! 
Hello? What was that? Oh, oh, easy boy. Here, 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 let me take a look. Just a nasty old bump. I'll have it comforted in no time. <laughs> by trying to eat me. Wait, that's it! No wonder I can't comfort you. You're hungry. Be right back. Don't go away. Good. The trap's reset. And now that we know it works, all we gotta do is rescue my life. <laughs> A little milky milk to wash it down? Bet you're feeling more comforted now, huh? Uh-oh, Tommy Trouble. Don't worry, I know just the thing. Nothing like flat ginger ale and castor oil to cure gastric indigestion. This trap's foolproof! Guaranteed to stop any closet monster fool enough to mess with us. Now we can rescue Molly! But aren't we gonna test it? You're right, Mr. Pumpy. It didn't need to be tested. <laughs> Down, boy! You'll overtax your fabric resistance! I know I can handle him, but how? Of course, music soothes the savage beast. rock a -bye monster in the big closet. When the toys fall, you'll be kabonked on your head. When the clothes mildew, you'll get all moldy. Then you'll be comforted and totally grody. What was that? You think? Could it be? What if Molly? Bumpy, no! <laughs> Hereby pronounce this closet monster to be comforted. Fear not, Molly! I've come to rescue you! Me too. Bobby! Squishy gun! No! Closet monster, you rapscallion! I, I've got a pillow, and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> oh, it's hopeless now, hopeless! And I was so close to being eaten. Good thing we came when we did, and now that we're here, let's leave. <laughs> What's first, Squishington? Um, okay, as soon as door A closes, bowling ball B swings in. He's still coming, Squishington. What's next? What's next? Oh, uh, the box. Give me three, bro. We're 
Fire number one, we did it! You did it all right. You ruined my efforts to comfort the closet monster. <laughs> comfort the closet monster? Are you kidding? You can't do that. Oh, he's right, Miss Molly. In the latest poll, three out of five comfort dolls agree. Give me a break. Didn't you see the opening scene? I'm a comfort doll extraordinaire. I can comfort anything, and that includes closet monsters. But, 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 but Molly. Don't, but, 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 Molly me. Look, just leave me alone, okay? I've had a bad day. Come on, Bumpy. I know a good wallowing spot if you're in the mood. We're alone now. My friends just don't understand. You and I, we've bonded. As soon as you're free, we'll go to them. Won't they be in for a surprise? <laughs> then again, maybe I'll be eating my razor-sharp teeth. Help! Boy, the nerve of that comfort doll. <laughs> I wouldn't help her now if she was being eaten by razor-sharp teeth. Help! I'm being eaten by razor-sharp teeth! All this was my fault. <laughs> You're right. Rock a bye, monster, in the big closet. When the toys fall, you'll be clocked on your head. Nutter and Baker, no weapons, no prints, no witnesses. A serial killer is on the loose. Killer has a knowledge of anatomy. Every strike is a vital area, a nerve center. He's part man, part metal, pure evil. Welcome to hell! What the hell is going on? Well, let's see, we got four dead bodies out there. He's using today's technology to trap his next victim. What a lovely family. To stop him, you have to hit fast, hit hard. And only one man can do the job and do it right. The two of you can be working together as partners on this case. Looks like you win. The end game has begun! Very good. The killings are getting closer together. He's getting better at it. Last location, 843 Adams Street, number 21. This way, we're at the corner. Blood Moon, starring action powerhouse Gary Daniels. It's just me and him now. Chuck Jeffries and Frank Portion. Blood Moon. You get one shot before he kills you. From Universal Studios Florida, it's WMAC Masters. An Olympic gold medalist takes on the reigning WMAC champion. It's Olympus versus Turbo for the Dragon Star, today on WMAC Masters. They're the world's greatest martial artists, competing for the ultimate prize. Olympus. The Machine. Superstar. Red Dragon. Great Wolf. 
Tiger Claw, <laughs> Panther, Tsunami, Star Wars, Turbo. Their quests reach full Dragon Belt, then go for the Dragon Star itself. The World Martial Arts Council presents WMAC Masters. It's a big day here at the WMAC Arena. Hi everyone, I'm Shannon Lee and this is a special Dragon Star Championship edition of WMAC Masters. The audience today is comprised solely of recruits from the WMAC Academy, dressed in their various warrior outfits. Some of them will take part in the Dragon Star match between reigning champion Mike Turbo Bernardo and Olympus Herb Perez, Taekwondo's 1992 Olympic gold medalist. Man, if I had Herb's gold medal, I would never take that bad boy off. Never? I'd wear it in the shower. <laughs> Wait a minute, Herb, come here a second, man. <laughs> Do us all a favor, man. Lend this guy your gold medal, seriously. Why? Because Chris needs to take a shower. <laughs> no way, man. What's wrong with you? Well, I wish I could, but I don't have it anymore. What do you mean you don't have it anymore? Your gold medal's gone? Well, not exactly. Eric and I were in this WMAC kicks, drugs, and violence. One of the seminars took us back to my old high school. The kids there were really excited for our visit, all except for one. Thanks a lot, Thanks. Right. Watch where you're going, stupid idiot! You want to see some real martial arts? I'll show you some. Yeah! 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 No! It's not right, man. Come on. You need to leave him alone. Come on, man. You okay? Yeah. Come on with me. Something about that kid reminded me of myself at his age, before I got my act together. It was this very school that helped me turn out all right. So while I was back in town for the seminar, I wanted to somehow show my appreciation. You know him as one of the WMAC masters, but he also has a college degree and is a lawyer. And I am proud to welcome back the most distinguished graduate from Memorial High School, 1992 Olympic gold medalist, Herb Perez. Thank you, Mr. Stanton. None of my accomplishments would have been possible without the tremendous support and education I received right at this school. I learned that to do great things, you must first start by being a good person. Come on. Man. I'd like to dedicate this Olympic gold medal Memorial High School. Hopefully it will inspire other students to achieve their goals as well. Thank you. That gold medal journeyed a long way to finally wind up in my old high school's trophy case. I never dreamed that it wouldn't stay there for long. I am Panther. <laughs> Eric and I put together a program that encourages students to stay off drugs and respect each other. And to start it off, the Panther goes wild. It captured the complete attention of everybody. Well, almost everybody. That kid may have known some martial arts moves, but he certainly wasn't a martial artist. Uh, hey, Mr. Stafford, it's great to be back. Thanks for letting us give a message out to the students here. Yeah, all right. Well, it seems that your message isn't sinking in with everyone. Your gold medal, it's been swiped. What? How? Are you guys ready for Olympus? I went to show it to some of the faculty, and it was just gone. Well, even after that shocker, you know what they say, the show must go on. Thank you! First, what do WMAC masters do when someone tries to start a fight? Do what's right, don't fight! Do what's right, don't fight! Hey, if you don't want to listen, why don't you leave? Come on, buddy. Show a little respect here. Why don't you make me? You know, that's a good idea. I've seen some of your moves before. Why don't you come down and help us with the next part of the demo? Get out of here. No way. <laughs> come on, hot shot. Come on, Jay. Come, come down and show hey, some of your moves. Come on. Let's give this guy a hand. Come on. Hey, what's your name? Turbo loser. Oh. What's this? Well, he 
and I hit it off about as well as a real turbo in me. I don't know, Herb. There's a better chance of us finding a second Dragon Star than ever seeing you go metal again. You never know. You know, I don't know what to do with you. Just sit down. You know, we have a lot more in common than you might think, Turbo. It's Jay. There's teachers like Mrs. Stanford help me focus all my energies on doing the right things with my life. You're a really talented kid, Jake. There are a lot of people in the school who can help you, too. I must have spent two hours talking to Jake. When he finally warmed up to me, he was full of curiosity about the World Martial Arts Council and the Olympics. I could see there was a smart, enthusiastic person behind that tough guy image. He was a pretty good athlete, too. But I wasn't sure if he really believed that it was possible to change his life for the better, the way that I did. Oh, I see why you weren't on the Olympic basketball team. Oh, you had to mention the Olympics. It's just getting over my medal being stolen. We'll try getting over this. Oh, yeah. What the hell? Look, he's still a gold medalist whether you have it or not. At least he may have helped turn Jake around. You got a pretty good lesson today. And I saw you. Oh! Whoa. Yeah! That's the game. <laughs> How about I meet you out front? Get the car left my back inside. Okay. My gold medal never meant more to me than at that very moment. Not because it was back, but because of who brought it back. Jake was desperate for respect. That was the same way as a kid. Yeah, me too. But I became a student in the martial arts. I realized you had to earn respect. First point of the Dragon Star. And now you're an Olympic champ. Future Dragon Star champ? I hope so. But I gotta get past him first. Now entering the World Martial Arts Council Arena. Mike Bernardo, King Simbo, Turbo, Status, Dragon Star Champion. This day, by mandate of the World Martial Arts Council, Turbo must again prove himself worthy of the Dragon Star. Will Turbo hold on to his Dragon Star title, or is he just getting the throne warmed up for Olympus? We're just moments away from the championship match, and we'll have a look at the ongoing women's tournament next. WMAC Arena, final preparations are being made for the Dragon Star match between Turbo and Olympus. While we wait, here's an update on some recent action in the women's tournament. Christine Rodriguez, Lady Lightning, Martial Arts Discipline, Genpo, Dragon Belt Status, 8. Murmur Chen, Princess, Martial Arts Discipline, Wushu, Dragon Belt Status, 3. Doom City, with its black ninjas, was the site of this preliminary match between two very different martial arts stylists. The power bars were dead even during the first half of the competition as the athletes easily handled the ninja onslaught. But once the two came close enough to battle it out one-on-one, -on -one, Lady Lightning struck, dominating Princess for an easy win. Our second match also took place at Doom City. Baby Doll, Martial Arts Discipline, Kickboxing, Dragon Belt Status, 7. Mouse, Martial Arts Discipline, Karate, Dragon Belt Status, 3. the match, Bridget Riley was in top form, but Michelle Krasnu had to struggle hard against the ninjas. 
By the time Mouse met Baby Doll head to head, she didn't have much left. As always, the two winners headed back inside the arena for their showdown. Battle Dome Finals, Christine Rodriguez, Lady Lightning, Bridget Riley, Baby Doll. A win for Christine would move her to within one key symbol of full Dragon Belt. That much closer to challenging Tarantula for the women's Dragon Star title. Zero, one. Baby Doll took the early lead, but Lady Lightning countered with two quick scores of her own. This action took place with less than a minute to go. Two, two. After tying the score, Baby Doll fell behind when two ninjas knocked her into the dome. Then Lady Lightning sealed the victory in the final seconds like this. That's a look at some of the women's action. Now let's go back live to the arena, where this crowd is about to get turbocharged. See that? Turbo just burned Olympus's key symbol. That's typical, huh? Ah! Did you just hear what I said? He burned your key symbol. So what? Ow! So doesn't that burn you up inside too? Ow! Herb's got a plan, something to outdo him with. Something big. So what do you have in mind exactly? Herb, Perez, Olympus, Dragon, Belt, Status, Full, shall now satisfy the final condition for Dragon Star Certification, Relinquishment of the Dragon Belt. Olympus will now perform a demonstration of Taekwondo, and rumor has it that he'll be using some of Mike Bernardo's very own turbo staffs. Olympus, begin. Olympus, continue. Finish it. Get set for Olympus versus Turbo. We'll be back to Universal Studios Florida for the championship match. The Dragon Star up for grabs. Arena. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Who will be crowned the world's greatest martial artist? Dragon Star Championship. Herb Perez, Olympus, Mike Bernardo, Turbo. Turbo will now place the Dragon Star within the Tri Chamber Cyber Cell. Once the Dragon Star makes contact, it will lower and the entire platform will begin to rotate.
The Dragon Star will not rise out of the cyber cell again until there is a winner. And the winner will be the athlete who is left standing alone atop the rotating platform. Dragon Star match begin. The rules are simple. If you fall completely off the cylinder, you lose. However, if you leave the rotating platform but do not fall off, that is considered a violation and the council orders a ninja to join the battle to increase the difficulty level. In order to win, you must be the only one atop the platform. Your opponent and all ninjas must be forced off. Violation Ninja 1. Engage. Ninja to engage. Swinging from the chains is part of the strategy and is not considered a fall. But if you land on the pads at the base of the cylinder, you're out of the map. Violation Ninja 3. Engage. Ninja War Engage unaware that Olympus is dangling from the ninja. I'm sure he thinks if he gets rid of the last two warriors up on the platform, he'll win. And he may, if Olympus can't hang on. in Taekwondo has now attained the ultimate prize in martial arts. Herb said he was dedicating his match today to a student named Jake at Seoul High School. He's got to be one happy young man right now. As the new Dragon Star champion, Herb Perez will occupy the throne in the WMAC What are you all looking at? Oh, nothing. Just the ex-champion. Don't worry, I'll be back. As Mike Bernardo did unsuccessfully today. And as for Turbo, he'll most likely re-enter the WMAC Masters Tournament, going for his second degree Dragon Belt. But the former champion will have to start fresh, with no key symbols to his credit. For the World Martial Arts Council, I'm Shannon Lee. See you next time on WMAC Masters. Filmed at Universal Studios Florida, where you can ride the movies. Like all the WMAC masters, Herb Perez sets a series of goals for himself that he's constantly updating. High school graduation, Olympic gold medal, law degree, and now he's a Dragon Star champion. So whatever your goals are, 
big or small, you don't give up. You stay in school, you learn all you can, and you keep trying. You are the master of your own destiny. に沸く我が
リアンだ言い伝えは本当だったのね夢だわ夢を見てるんだわジョジョもしあの中にジョジョだやはり何もかも運命なのだ彼はこの世界の救世主となるべく生まれてきたのだマダルの滅びる時が来たんだアズベス様すべてのものにジョジョの身分を何もかん今はまだその時ではないそれより皆の士気が高まっている反撃の時だぞわかりましたみんな俺の言うことを聞けあのガリアンこそ我らが救世主だマーダル軍を倒すのは今だ続けガリアンが出現したそれは大したことではないいずれ予想されたことだだが一体誰がガリアンそうだそれが問題だお呼びですか私はガリアンの操縦者が知りたい操縦者をぜひともにな行けハイシャルタット期待しているはっ
守れ入り口を固めろしましたうろたえるな第四第六機関部のパワーを上げろ早くハエどもを追い出せうわあハミおお爆発するぞ逃げろで陣馬兵を突入させるだろうジョジョが門の前の広場で陣馬兵さえ食い止めてくれればあとは我々だけで何とかできるジョジョだけに任せるつもりなのか敵はそれほど甘くはないぞさっきのようにやればいいジョジョは立派に戦ったじゃないですか何もかも
彼がわきまえた上で戦ったように見えるかガリアンに乗ったのは今宵が初めてなのだぞ期待しすぎては危険だアズベス様そろそろ秘密を打ち明けたらいかがでしょうボーダー王の着手であることを知れば彼の気持ちも高揚すると思いますこの戦いが自分にとってどういう意味を持つか知っていいはずです我々の力はまだ弱いガリアンを得たからといって道は長いしかし彼が自分の地位や名誉のためだけではなくアーストの人々のために立ち上がるときそれを知ればよいシュルルみんな心の中では諦めていたのよいつかマーダル軍が攻めてきて殺されるんだってそれがこんなことになったんですものみんなジョジョのおかげよあれを見つけたのは君さん操ったのはあなたよそういう気がしないんだあの時不思議なことが起きて気がついたら俺はあれを動かせるようになっていたどうしてなんだそんなことどうでもいいじゃないあなたはあのガリアンを手に入れたのよあなたのものよ思い切り使えばいいのよ何かとてつもないことが起きそうな気がするあなた怖いのねそうじゃないそうよ怖いのよ呆れたわあんなすごいものを手に入れておきながらぐずぐず泣き言ばかりそうじゃないんだ何かとてつもないことが始まりそうなそんな気がするんだこれからずっと嘘ジュルルどうして分かってくんないのかな待ってよジュルルあ,あ,あどうしたんだいあ,あ,あ,あんたの活躍はずっと見せてもらったよジョジョあ、あ、だけどいつ剣を抜いたのかも気がつかなかったど,どうやってあのとはじめは誰でもそうなのさほんといい子だねジョジョあのガリアンと一緒に旅をしたくないかいえ強い男になりたくはないかいああジョジョ何やってんのまた会おうねううんあの綺麗な人は誰だいひるむかよここの人違うわ一ヶ月ほど前にここに流れてきたのよ男の人には人気があるけどお父様を疑ってるわどうしてあんたもあんな人が好きなのえ好きなんでしょう<笑>だったらどうなんだい<笑>
楽しむか。谷の人を守らなくちゃ。よしけ。が通用するか、死ね。お遊びはこれで終わりだ。しいなだがあの光は何だ追いますか無論だ
仲良しのチュルルが謎の女ヒルムカにさらわれた光る船を追う俺の前にダブルトマホークを使う銀色の飛行兵が襲いかかってきた次回「チュルル」を追ってお楽しみに Is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law? Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control, even over his own will.
Wow! I didn't know there were so many people in Wyndham. What's the matter? You seem a little down or something. No, I'm okay. This is real. How could anyone have dreamed of a day like this three years ago? I know! But one man did. Only he saw it. I will have my own kingdom. It's amazing. He did it. Lovely as you did in the last one. You have changed five dresses, my lady. You had best decide. Really? Oh, but, but I think... My lady, quickly, hurry, here he comes. Please hurry, he's passing by. Oh, wait, I'm coming. The princess certainly has become cheerful all of a sudden. She all but lost her appetite when the hawks were sent to the field. Far too difficult with such a noisy crowd. We'd best wait until the celebration tonight. All right. Have you made the arrangements? Consider it done, Your Majesty. Perhaps we should hold a celebration. A tremendous feast when all has fallen into place. To express our regrets over his untimely passing. How deliciously ironic. The White Hawk of the battlefield will end up caged within the very walls he has defended. How fitting that he should meet his end on this day, the most notable of his brief existence. One might even think it merciful. Mr. Voss! Hmm? What is it? I bring a letter addressed to you, sir. A letter? Who on earth could it be from? I don't know. A lady from the court entrusted this to me. Excuse me. <gasps> uh, this, this, this is... What is the matter, Minister? Foss? Uh, well, uh, 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 nothing is the matter, Your Majesty. I have a small errand to attend to. If you would please excuse me, I'll take my leave. Good day, Your Highness. How did this happen? Bastard! I 
can't believe it. All the commoners' hard work and taxes must have gone into this place. I know. Hey. <laughs> Stick out your chest. They will look down on you if they think you're not confident. I feel so nervous that it's embarrassing. To think we've come this far to walk through these halls like this. Yeah, you're right. I can't believe that I'm standing in a place I only ever heard existed in fairy tales. If I'd never met the Hawks, I would never even have imagined it. Me, in a huge castle like this, surrounded on all sides by nobles. Not even in my wildest dreams. So terrific! Wait for me! Welcome back, my lord. It's so good to see you safe. We were ever so worried about you. I hear the Hawks carry the battle on their shoulders once again. Would you delight us with one of your tales of the battlefield? May I offer myself for a dance later? Oh, yes. I would like to dance with you as well. Won't you grace us with a story first? I'm sure my tales, barbarous as they are, would only bore ladies such as yourselves. It would be impossible for you to oh, bore us. Oh, no, no. Please, please tell us your adventures. Yes. Oh, yes. Look at that. He certainly seems at home. Damn. You think you could at least spare a couple of them for me? Oh, you must be the commanders of the Hawks. Please tell us about your heroic exploits on the battlefield. You certainly are strong, aren't you? Well, I must confess, yes I am. Sometimes I'm afraid of my own strength. It's him! It's him! The commander of the Hawks Raiders! Oh. The one who defeated General Muscon oh. in the Tell us a story about oh. it. Yes. Oh, yes, How us. fabulous! Oh, tell us about the fact that General Muscon totally was their greatest oh, hero so at Hell's Mutation and still known oh. far and wide. Oh, that's true! Yes, yes, yes. yes. it is true! Oh. You fought a hundred men single-handed oh. and defeated them all! Oh. Well, yeah. Oh. Unbelievable! Oh, okay. You must be the strongest man in the Hawks! Oh, yes. Who's stronger, Sir Griffith, or you? <laughs> uh, you take care of them. Oh, 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 oh. All right, if you insist! That's not fair, Guts! Oh, you're so adorable! Uh, who, me? Oh, let me oh. see! Oh. 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 Let me see! Oh. 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 Uh, they're too cocky. Deep down, they most likely feel undeserving of this praise. Ah, perhaps. But even so, the generals can't help but admit their capabilities. The Hawks have proved themselves. How could anyone deny it? It was the Hawks who, after 100 years, fulfilled the long-cherished wish of our kingdom and accomplished it almost effortlessly. It was wise. You speaking on his behalf, I mean. I think I shall follow your example. You speak like some scheming minister, Sir Owen. But perhaps we will all need to be a little like that in the future. The war is over. I pray that the peace and the tranquility that is upon us will last for ages to come and longer. In a time of peace, those warriors among us who know nothing but war and the sword must find a new way to survive. Life in the court is a very different world for us. It is ironic that it is so, but the man that brought this peace must be aware of it as well. That man stands out far too much. His survival in the court will be difficult. The stronger that any light shines, the darker the shadows around him grow. My god, this is miserable. What are they doing? Huh? Huh? Come on! Hey! Wait! What the... Oh, who the hell are you? Huh? Those men keep pestering me and I don't know what to do about it. I thought you might pretend to be my partner. I guess those useless sons of nobles have never seen a female warrior before. They stare at me like I'm some kind of rare animal. Huh? You're staring. I didn't know that you liked to wear... <laughs> Don't do that to me. Huh? Uh, hurry! Come here! How embarrassing! 
Wait. <laughs> I'm not very good at things like this. Swinging a sword around is much more comfortable. I agree. I wonder what put this idea into your head. To think of you, our brave and fierce sister Casca, in a dainty dress like this. It's a little difficult to ride a horse and fight like this. Men's clothing is more practical. It's silly. I can't believe I came wearing something like this. Look at the size of this thing. I feel like I look like a church bell. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I even wore a skirt, let alone a fancy gown. And look at all my muscle. I look silly, don't I? The truth. No. You look very lovely. Really? Sure. Far better than those noble girls crowding around Griffith. <sighs> Casca, why don't you ask Griffith to dance with you? Oh, no. That's impossible. I haven't danced since the small festivals in my village when I was a child. I would probably just step all over his feet. But what about you? This appearance seems out of character. I didn't think you liked attending these formal celebrations. I want to see everything through to the end. What? Ever since I met you all three years ago, what Griffith and I, what everyone else in the Band of the Hawk has done these years, what he's won, and what he stands to win now that he has come this far. I want to see everything through to its conclusion. That's why I came here tonight. To finish it. Tell me. You want to leave, don't you? Leave the Hawks. There's our sponsor now. Why don't you go ahead without me? I'm gonna stay out here for a while and cool off. I refuse to go in there and listen to one of the King's tedious speeches. Well, I'll be inside. Mm. You know... Huh? No. It was nothing. There is another reason why I'm here at this evening's party. Nobody suspects what'll happen here in a few moments. Neither Casca nor the other members of the Hawks. It's a bit too much for them, isn't it, Griffith? First of all, I shall share some good news with you. A little while ago, a Tudor special envoy arrived in our kingdom. What they carried with them is a signed armistice treaty. I would like to express my gratitude to you for all the ordeals you've endured and the great hardships you've suffered under these long years. It is understandable that more than a few of you may be displeased by the armistice. After all, so many of you have lost your family and friends to this war. And this wartime enmity has been harbored for generations. However... It is urgent that we use this time to rebuild. The war effort has thoroughly exhausted our kingdom. I expect you all to use your assets to contribute to the prosperity of my reign. As I am sure most of you already know, this armistice is owed in great part to the distinguished services of the Band of the Hawk led by Count Griffith. During the past 100 years, the conquest of Doldry has been thought all but impossible. They alone succeeded where others had not, showing unparalleled and dauntless courage of the greatest uh, magnitude. It is my pleasure to inform you at this joyous celebration that on the day after tomorrow, 
There will be a rite of decoration held to honor these men. I believe that it is proper for me to grant Count Griffith and the Hawks the title of White Knights, with supreme command over all of Midland's armies. The titles most appropriate to be granted are the White Hawk General Griffith and the White Hawk Knights. I shall personally knight all the commanders of the Hawks' companies and raise them to peerage. This. We're going to become nobles! Become drunk on your elusive prosperity while you still can. It is about time, Minister Foss. Mm -hmm. Is there something wrong? You seem pale. Ah. This is most unlike you. Can it be that you are afraid of being... That's, uh, not my concern. Pull yourself together, man. Please! Thank you. And now, I would like to make a toast in celebration of our young heroes and to the prosperity of Midland. Excuse me, pardon me. To our heroes. Hear, hear! Here, here, here! <laughs> Excuse me, please. Pardon me. General Griffith.
are the thoughts of a man as he reaches the summit of his dream. Of days long past, ambitions to come, emotions such as love. The dream is fulfilled for the man's own sake, yet in its pursuit there is something else he loses. But when finally he finds it to be missing, will it be too late to restore what is lost? reaches of space. Some darkness approaching. The ultimate enemy has arrived. I have a bad feeling about all this. Their single purpose, destroy our world. Let's plant this thing. From the seeds of destruction, a new threat has arisen. A tree with the power to enslave a planet. The tree of might will leave Earth withered up and dry. Seven heroes are all that stand in its way. I won't let the Earth be destroyed. Power up! Bring it on! Tsunami presents a special encore one-hour Dragon Ball Z movie. Tree of Might, next. Central element of the DBZ triple feature. Only Tsunami. fighter, especially since you have the hot for him, Megumi. Hey, look over there. There's your rival. Takayanagi's not just in Hyoto's class. She's also in his clubs. Oh, I'm so jealous. She's with him all the time. And on top of that, she's charming. Oh, and she's got a positive attitude. On the other hand, Look at you! At this rate, she's gonna beat you out. Is that what you want? It's just that when I see Riki face to face, I never know what to say. So all I can do is watch him from a distance. Captain Baba, if you please. <laughs> sure, but it's still not too late to change your mind. Think about it. What will you do? Instead of aiming for the number one ranking in karate, I want to be the best fighter in the entire world! <laughs> My, how glorious! Cocky, aren't we? You never know until you try, Captain. You're fast, Yodo. But not faster than me! You dodged my Sikanzuki punch! I've never seen that move before. You're a skillful fighter, Captain. I see you're keeping your distance to conserve strength and figure out my weak points. But it's of no use. I won't let anyone stand in my way. After I finished with you, my study of unconventional techniques will continue. Then I'll be the best damn fighter in the entire world! Captain! What? Uh...
Oh, hey, Rio, what's up? Look who's talking. What's up with you, Riki? Huh? Oh, you mean about before? I had to prove to myself that I was really good enough to move on. You never told me anything like that. Why so sudden? Hey, wait! I don't know why exactly. I just felt like fighting, that's all. Ah, what's that supposed to mean? Riki, do you know what you're doing? Oh, buzz off. No, I won't. Baba said he's going to resign because you beat him. Now, what will happen to our club then? I don't care. What are you talking about? It's all your fault. Baba said that I had to knock out the entire club in order to quit, so that's exactly what I did. Besides, I had to quit this club in order to compete with guys from the other clubs. Get it? Figures. You're only thinking about yourself. And what about the meet next month? Without you, we're screwed. Hey, wait! I haven't been doing karate all of this uh, time just for the good of the uh, damn club, and I wasn't competing for the good of the school, either! You bastard! Don't run away from me! I have to finish talking to you, Riki! Take it easy, Rio. See you later. Bye! You stubborn fool! Lord Byodo, the dimensional gate has been opened. As the legend foretells, when the gate is open, the leopard-headed warrior will appear and face a being of the dark world. At that time, the legendary warrior shall be born. I see. As of late, I have felt my powers draining, and I believe it to be a part of this prophecy. Aye. Perhaps it is being transmuted into the power of fate. The power that will produce the legendary warrior. Or perhaps it is already taking some form in another dimension. If not, perhaps, Your Majesty, a trap. Perhaps it is the work of the heavens, a plot to limit Your Majesty's power. But why would anyone wish such a thing? I care not. The dimensional gate has been opened. Your Highness. The time to fight has come. Okay, class, so again, those homework pages for tomorrow were 79 through 84. Huh? huh? What's wrong, Hyodo? Riki, you're drooling. The time to fight has come. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Ricky's daydreaming. Mm. <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> <coughs> Damn. What? Dreaming what? Stand? Oh. Mr. Hyodo, I'm not through with you yet. Bow. Thank you, everyone. That is all. Goodbye. I'm gonna go buy yes, some goodbye. sweets. You want anything? Hey, could you give me my going. usual? Mr. Hyodo, there is a faculty meeting this afternoon to discuss the mess you caused yesterday, and now you fall asleep in my class and even mumble and drool. Did you know the karate club captain Baba is now resigning, and the club advisor is not very happy either? It's possible this could get you held back. Riki thinks about nothing but putting himself in the spotlight. You beat the entire karate club? Yep. Didn't know you were that strong. What are you talking about, guys? You mean, you don't know? Nope. He only beat the entire karate club. Uh, beat them all just so he could quit. Wow. Really? Wow. But why did you have to wear 
A leopard mask? To get attention. Besides, I found it in my house and thought it was cool, so... With this on, I'll be the number one fighter on Earth. Captain Baba! Please reconsider for the sake of the club. Thanks. But I won't change my mind. I just handed in my resignation. You see, I wasn't strong enough. But it was all Riki's fault! No. It was all mine. Oh, but Captain Baba! I'm sorry if I sound a little selfish. Here you go. They didn't have meat pies today, so I brought cutlets and egg sandwiches instead. Thanks, dude. And so I'll wear my mask like a gorilla soldier and beat the hell out of the other schools. And then the media picks up on the story and I'll be in the newspapers and TV and everything. What? Yeah. I'll get on the nerves of those pro fighters with big egos. They challenge me, I kick their butts one by one. A world-class celebrity from our class? That's awesome, man! Hey, if you'd like, you can have this. Huh? You sure? I mean, if, if a future celebrity has my lunch now, well, when you become a real celebrity, I can brag about it in the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, yeah? Thanks, man. Here, it's for you. Well, if you don't mind... <laughs> Thanks. 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 Gee, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Huh? Rio, you too? You got a lunch for me? Oh, you want my autograph? What are you so happy about? Baba resigned from the club, you know. Master Yodo, do not underestimate them. They are nothing but pitiful fools. What? Two? Three? I see. Oh, why'd you do that? Hey. Guys? Uh-oh. Did I hit my head too hard, or... What the heck? He's cold. <laughs> huh? Huh? A classroom? What happened to the hallway? I did hit my head hard. Let me see what's there. That's weird. I didn't know he had a classroom like this. Yeah. Lend me your ears. <laughs> Among my world's many legends, one foretells this tale. That when a gate of light is open, a leopard-headed warrior will appear. There in the underworld, a fierce battle will be fought. But before the victor can conquer the two worlds, he becomes the leopard-headed warrior whom I must face. The time that has been foretold has come. Fuck that shit, I'll kick your ass! Come out and fight! Huh? I am Yodo, Master of the Dark Realm. Yodo, the Master of the Dark Realm? Huh? Damn, there's a few too many of them! Huh? I am Dodo, Master of the Dark Realm. You're the king I saw in my dream. I thought it was only a matter of defeating you, but there is one thing I must confirm. What the... Ah! 
Got anything else you want to show me? Just as I thought. This was all a diabolical trap sprung on me by someone who could not tolerate my relentless increase in power. Whatever you say, fruitcake. Stop mumbling and get on with it. What's next? Get a move As you on. wish. Raise your left arm. And then what? Ah! Shit! You think you're funny, you asshole? Don't be foolish. You paralyzed me. Now I understand what the legend is saying. Uh huh? Don't you realize that you are another part of me? A part that exists in this world. You are my counterpart. Oh, shit. This guy's a total nutcase. Hey, that's all very interesting, but it doesn't have anything to do with me, so, um, maybe we could continue this chat a bit later? <laughs> you think I'm a nutcase? You want to run away? What a pitiful soul you are! So you can read my mind, too? Hey, come back here where I can see you! Return to where you belong! What do you think you're doing? Stop it! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh, you made me hit my head. <laughs> hmm? And you think you're gonna be the world champion, huh? I guess I was dreaming after all. You've got a long way to go, pal. <laughs> the hallway. Hmm. What's wrong? It's Baba. It is? <gasps> Captain Baba! Kyoto's gonna apologize about the match, what so please reconsider! About? Don't you see it's all your fault? Oh, he didn't hear me. Captain Baba! X02010, Echo4513. The subject has changed position by point delta. Have you completed calculating the total energy level? It's being redone since the previously computed value was infinite. My guess is that a space-time continuum distortion has adversely affected our system's calibration. Wouldn't that be why we're getting an infinite reading? An infinite energy reading? And an antimatter node? This is definitely a major temporal violation. It's been a while since we've dealt with a major case. <gasps> Sand can! There's a body of energy quickly approaching point X zero. It's appeared out of nowhere and is unlike the one we detected earlier. It's a hyper-psychokinetic what? wave. What's the location? Sir, it's at X zero. That's dangerous. I'd better go check it out. Which one? The antimatter node. Please be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll be damned. It doesn't look like an antimatter being. The other one? The psychokinetic wave activity is amazing. Now, you really can't judge a book by its cover. <gasps> no, he couldn't have. Not from that far away, not with the jammer activated. Have they started? From now on, the gangs in this territory will answer to me. Sam Flu. What's this, a fucking joke? <laughs> Don't make us laugh. Fighting in wussy sports ain't the same. So what are you gonna do about it, huh? Come on, you little punk. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> You're a dead man, asshole. I thought you wanted to fight, not show me your toys. <laughs> How do you like my toy now, asshole? It's a toy. Oh. You can't finish me oh. with toys. Oh. What are you, a fucking monster? Oh. Oh. Die, you motherfucker! Ladies shouldn't oh. swear. Let me go! Mm. Put me down! Nice! Put me down! Who the 
the fuck are you? One who by exterminating creatures like you strives to perfect his skills. That is who I am. Exterminate me? What are you, a demon master? A demon master? Do they even exist? You don't know, I see. Are you gonna hurt me with that little stick? I can feel the demon inside him. No way is this human. You are all mine to devour. There is nowhere to run. The girl may die, but I have no choice! I never dreamed creatures existed that could transform humans like this. Fairy. So the man and the cat were controlled by you. That school has to be it. Now this is getting interesting. That must be him. Either he's very inexperienced or his power is so great he's barely able to contain it. Hmm. He's come. Feeling lucky? Are you the demon master of this world? Wanna try me? Oops. Wrong one! We'll meet again. The subject has moved to grid reference 2031. It's the park above a small hill, two kilometers to the east. Got it. Keep him under surveillance and I'll switch over to our secondary subject. Incredible. He's clearly following the primary subject. This is no trivial matter. I'll keep tabs on him. You analyze the data for me. Roger. He must be in there. So, you've come. Monster, 
There's no escape this time. Ah. Reveal yourself. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I was only trying to kick a pebble, but then I missed it and I kicked the car instead. Liar! Ah. How's this possible? Can he read my mind? No! Ah. Face me yourself! Ah. Enough of your games! His powers are nothing like those of the first creature. Your attempts at intimidation are almost entertaining. Well, I'm certainly glad that someone out there enjoys them. This, this can't be happening. No! Popping out of the wounds, now that's impressive. A most unique maneuver on your part. Your powers are nothing like those of the first Now creatures. wait a minute, listen! I have nothing to say to you, monster. Ah! What? Listen to me before you attack! No, it's impossible! We can still fight after I'm done talking to you. I am Yodo, ruler of the Dark Realm. I arrived on this world in hopes of making a prophecy come true. However, I fell into a trap, laid by one of my followers. Is that justification for possessing innocent people? Transforming them into monsters? Wait! This body is that of Ricky Yodo, my counterpart in this world, in whom all my powers are contained because of the trap. We have merged into one body, but my own will is being suppressed. By your counterpart. Exactly. You see, the monsters you encounter today were the Fairy Master and her minions. And the reason I am here is to destroy their breeding nests. They are a nuisance if left alone. Take a look at this. They have characteristics similar to those of wasps. First, they invade other living organisms, then hunt for new prey. Prey to feed their offspring. They breed like roaches, you see. If left alone, there will be no end. The time it took me to vanquish one, thirty more have appeared. There will be no end to it, that's certain. They are the true devils who prey on people's weaknesses. Gruesome maggots. Their master, once my follower, plotted to revolt against me. This world teems with prey that will become food for the fairies. If we don't put an end to them now before they spread, this world will become theirs and you won't enjoy it, I'm sure. Indeed. That is why I would like to postpone our duel until some later date. Are we agreed? Fine. Our duel shall be postponed until the fairies have all been destroyed. I'm Toshimitsu Yuki. People call me a demon slayer. Mega Lord from another universe, and demonic fairies. Well, this is going to be a challenge. What's up? Fan Cam, the second of those anti matter bodies has started moving. It's at a location three kilometers uh. from your current position. Uh. Roger. Hmm. Pushing it. Yuki. Riki. <laughs> My Riki. A shooting star! Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Yeah, right. If wishes really did come true, this would be easy. And if Taki and Nagi wasn't around. Oh, this isn't easy, is it, Buttons? But I will always love Riki Hyoto. <gasps> Make your wishes come true. Let me help.
someone's following me. From behind. Behind the trees, eh? I wonder if it's some kind of pervert. Well... Hey! Show yourself! Weird. Don't scare me like that. Jeez. First you're a leopard, now you're a bear. It is you, isn't it? Freaky. Ladies have to be careful when walking alone at night. What have we here? Drink! Not bad for a stuffed animal! Stay out of this. What the hell? Huh? The bear is only a virtual image? The real object is that little stuffed animal. What? Its energy is derived from emotional stress? Impossible! This can't be! I don't believe it! I'm sorry I frightened you like that. Are you okay? Uh... I see. Yeah. I'm glad. Allow me. Thank you very much. If I may ask... Oh, forgive me. My name is Zhang Kan. I'm a space-time continuum enforcer. Since yesterday afternoon, we've been monitoring a rash of spatial distortions near your school. The stuffed bear we just saw may be a side effect of those very distortions. There are a few questions I'd like to ask you regarding that, if I may. Huh? Please, allow me to escort you home. That way I can ask you the questions while we walk. Okay. Sure. Buttons, where did you go? Hey, Buttons! Are you jealous of Hyoto or something? You failed. What's that all about? Oh, I'm going to bed. Sweet dreams, my darling Riki. A six-foot-tall teddy bear? And an outer space detective? That space detective person, Inspector uh, so-and-so, asked some things about you. Have you been doing something to make them investigate you? Do you have a fever or something? Or maybe you just had a nightmare last night. Erase her memory of last night. Uh, was I just saying something? Wow, that girl is fierce. It's only third period and she's at it already. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, Megumi, you don't look so good. I'm all right. Oh? Hey, Hyoto, someone from another school is here to challenge you. Huh? I would wager that the space detective has come to investigate. So where is he? He's already in the karate dojo waiting for you. Gotcha. I'll be right there. <coughs> Riki? You must be Yoda. And you are? I'm Zankan. As a person and as a warrior. Will you accept a challenge? You're here as a person and a warrior, eh? Interesting. Fine. I'll accept anybody's challenge any time. Hey, Shoto, what's up with you? This is a karate dojo. Take your shoes off. Oops. Almost forgot that. And put these on, too. I know. You forgot your leopard mask, too. I don't need it. Huh? You're not going to use it? Yep. How come? Quiet, man. Just shut up and watch. Sorry to keep you waiting. Just what brings you here? I'm here to see whether or not we can have a little discussion. Ah. 
not bad. Huh? My arms and legs. He made it look as if he was merely dodging your strikes, but he got to your pressure points. What seems to be the problem? What are you doing, Yodo? Hmm, I like I left that guy somewhere. Next, he'll probably finish you off. Don't tell me like it's happening to someone else. If I can't move, you're gonna be feeling the pain too. If you fail to dodge my next strike, you will die! Looks like a draw. <sighs> yeah, something like that. If there's something you wanted to discuss, talk to the man himself. I hope that there's still the chance for a peaceful resolution. Want to go up to the roof or someplace? Yeah, I'd like that if you don't mind. I knew you'd come. I've been waiting for you, confessing my uncertainties. The wait has paid off. You are surely a demon that seeks out people's weaknesses. Why are you so uncertain? You are the mighty destroyer of demons. Let me help. <laughs> An oral barricade! You've made your move. Do you think you fooled me? Only one remains. Art thou so afraid of my powers that you must cower within your barriers? We share a common interest, you and I. Silence! I'm not so naive as to fall for your petty tricks. Reveal yourself, Fairy Master. Whatever you do, you can't break these barriers. My name is Kine, Demon Master of the Fairies. The Demon Master of the Fairies? I am here in this world to assassinate Biodo. Behold this. Lord Biodo, not satisfied with ruling the Dark Realm, has come to this world intending to rule it. There's nobody on this planet strong enough to interfere with whatever it is that you are really capable of doing. But if you intend to include yourself in this planet's history, then I am officially obligated to do something about that. I shall become ruler of this world. You may challenge me at any time. You led me to believe our duel would be delayed to a later time. As soon as you defeat this fairy master or whatever it is, go back. If you don't return in peace, you'll return in pieces. I do not take orders. I suggest you learn how. What is it you want to say? If Biodo should become ruler of this world, then all living souls will be forced to follow his orders upon pain of death. That is undesirable. Well, I propose we join forces. If we do, then this world and the Dark Realm will once again be at peace. I refuse! <laughs> If you cannot defeat me, how can you possibly defeat Pietro? How did you break the barriers? They were useless from the very beginning. Even though your conscious will refuses me, I know you yearn to defeat Pietro. Your desire betrays you. Let me help. I insist. What are you doing? Now let us merge and form a being transcendent of both you and I. Be gone! No! No! second year students must report to the gym. All student council members from each class and class officers are to report to the council room at once.
Are you feeling all right? Do you think maybe you should skip the meeting? It's okay, I'm fine. Say, Ricky, have I been acting weird at all lately? Yep, you're a complete pervert. <gasps> I meant. It's just that, I don't know, I've been acting kind of forgetful these past couple of days. Hmm. Uh, three o'clock? Zantan? Oh, Sandy. What is it? I've just detected strong psychokinetic wave activity. The location is F205N50V124, just 200 meters from your current location. That must be him. The psychokinetic wave activity is very unstable. This is very disturbing. I'd better go check it out. Sandy, I'm gonna have to interrupt my stake out of Hyodo. Do me a favor and take over for me. Okay, be careful. And I feel like my... Paul's memories are more real now. Oh, Takianagi, is Hyodo playing hooky again? Huh? If he doesn't go to that meeting, he is in big trouble. Takianagi, listen, do me a favor, look for him. I'll go talk to the committee in the meantime. Huh? What's the rush? Where are you going? I see that your psychokinetic wave activity is unstable. Is there an emergency you have to take care of while school's in session? I'd be very interested in knowing. Would you mind telling me? Hold it right there. I have to verify something right now. So you're the one who's been following me these last few days. Sorry, but I must be going. You leave me no choice but to use force. <laughs> <laughs> You intend to stop me? I see that your business must be very important. In which case, there's even more reason why I cannot let you go. Even if it means a duel to the death. Are you certain of that? Because it is you who will die. We'll see about that! Now they're going at it. My, my, what a sight. Your folks are going to cry when they see you. Looks like you've stopped being human, in which case it's time for you to stop being alive. It's no use. You can't break those bonds. Haven't you had enough? Look back! You've obviously been possessed by the Fairy Master! Clever man! You can admit that you're not interfered! That's just what I wanted to hear. What? Without solid evidence, I cannot simply destroy a suspect. 
But thanks to your confession, I can fight you without mercy. I see. Very interesting. In that case, without mercy, we'll destroy you. You're the one who will die. I don't know what your motives are, but your powers threaten this world's stability. As the space-time continuum enforcer, I cannot allow you to proceed. Behold my true powers! Take your best shot. Uh, uh, Yoro? You're awake. It's all right now. Nothing to worry about, okay? Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Uh, <laughs> I said it's okay. I wasted those assholes, so don't worry. I love you! Uh, and I've always been watching you. Uh... Uh... Help me. What a fool! It thought we wouldn't notice. This must be the mother of the ones we just destroyed. This is the third fairy. I wish that act had lasted a little longer. Bummer. Yo, Mr. Narrator! Her consciousness hasn't been devoured yet. I take it she loves me a great deal. Not you. The one she loves is me. I can't, I can't fight it anymore. Ricky, finish me. Yeah, I'll kill you. A lame stunt. Even though you're just lumps of meat, I'm not finished with you. Yeah. Eat this! Your toys are of no use against that. What? As we said, it is of no use against us. You idiot! Oh shit! Come on, come and get me, I'll tear you apart! Obey the laws of physics! What's the matter? Was that it? Was that all your true power? Fine. Time to get serious! Our duel is not over yet! Now the real work begins. Forget her. Why bother? Quiet! Got some interesting moves. Don't worry. One blow from this in your history. Thanks for your consideration. Prepare. 
prepare yourself. Hmm. We will fall for the same trick again. <laughs> nice tits. It's obvious that you are exhausted. Even in my dark realm, the reconstruction of life takes more energy than anything else. Those guys must be finished. Fool. You have no one to blame but yourself. I've taken too long. He's here. We were just about to come looking for you. Yuki! A coup de gras? That isn't like you at all. You look exhausted. Even so. Shall we pick up our duel where we left off? Anytime you're ready, pal. Don't attempt to block his attacks directly or you'll surely die. I'd appreciate it if you'd tell me these things in advance. What with everything I did earlier, I'm pooped. Then flee. You make it sound like he's already won. You never told me it would be like this. The Lord of the Dark Realm fleeing. I'll not permit it. Coming to this world, you've acquired all manner of human weaknesses. How could anyone fear you now, Beauty? Uh, 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 He's one of them. Shut up. Uh, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself. I did it to defeat uh, you. Those punks in the lab were almost enough to destroy you. So much for the Lord of the Dark Realm. If we get hit again, we're dead meat. Now what the fuck do we do? Badly wounded, I see. He's coming for me. It's only a matter of time now. Ah! Yuki! You asshole! How could you? How could you let the fairy master take you over? You've lost your soul! And you've defeated yourself! You, who were once a master! Now look at you! <laughs> Take your own advice! <laughs> that horn will continue to bore slowly into you until you die. Savor the pain! A 
subjects of the Dark Realm, we had to endure your torments. <laughs> and now, is this Biodo, Lord of the Dark Realm? The time of our sweet vengeance is at hand. Face the truth! <laughs> You've lost your mind. I owe you my thanks. The pain from this horn has rendered my counterpart unconscious, and now I am in control. Now I can use my powers in any way I desire. You lie! Is this my powers? You don't, you bastard! Oh shit! Oh shit! No, he's not on the third floor either. Oh, that idiot! Where is he? Oh, there you are! I've been looking all over for no, you. No, stay away! This. This is not what it looks like. Ricky? Now wait! Just wait for a minute, let me tell you what I just got. Oh, God! Oh, oh, God. oh, oh God. what do you want to say? Stop it, stop it! Oh, my oh, God, please, no! Grandpa, how long do you plan to hang around down there? Sandy, what was I supposed to be doing down here anyway? Beat me up. Roger.
No, these are different cameras. These are uh, documentary cameras. They're different. They could be grainy. You can bust them. Yeah. See, there's another shoot them and stuff. Yeah, you can shoot at them. People, they're used to dropping them and things. That looks better for the documentary footage. They like tested them and it bombed, didn't they? Uh-oh. Things aren't going well. <laughs> That's always good for documentary footage. That's it. Then they have this shots of like... <laughs> uh, seems the crowd is moving around. That's always good for documentary footage or for the animal <laughs> specials like this. Oh, this, this is what it's like back here. We're just hanging, uh, fishing. Yeah, I'm just crew. Uh, we just rubbing elbows back here at these stars. We're, we're teamster uh, replacements. We're stand-ins for teamsters. We're part of this whole thing, the program here. That's it. Job trainees. I bet it. What the hell's wrong? That thing ain't adjusted. No, we have two. Oh, Jesus. We were just having a personal conversation. Just discussing life as we know it. Look at the size of this! Do you like this? Our accessories important. I, I think, think very much are. so, for hunters especially. I know. You never know when an animal is just going to jump on you, and you don't know if he's going to match your coat. That's it, or if he's going to become one. <laughs> that's, that's the most important thing. You know, I think live furs are very important for the women in the 90s. Yeah. If you're actually wearing an animal and someone you don't like is there, you just say, sick hurt them. That's not bad, no. That's it. Pause. The fur will just fly. Fur. And if you have a baby seal on, if you're near a pool, you're fucked. <laughs> He'll drown you. Ah! We'll be right back. We're talking fashion. I'm Bob, and this is our show, In Your Ear.